two, one. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. We have a smaller crew today um, due to some technical issues. Unfortunately, Rusty and probably Felicia will not be joining us today, uh, which also means we're not going to have a regular session. But we figured we'd stop by, hang out, say hi to everybody, maybe answer some questions, or just uh, goof off. Um, so I need to turn my other monitor on. Give me one moment. <laughs> Someone take over. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to do some Q&A today, uh, answer some of your questions about uh, our characters, our plot that's going on, or even like uh, about us players as we play the characters. And uh, it could even uh, be about other things than just this game if you want to know about some of our other favorite games or whatever. We're here to have some fun, just some casual conversation, and uh, maybe get just into the minds of our characters a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. This is on short note, so we didn't have as much time to uh, prepare some questions. So whenever you think of some in, in the chat, go ahead and just type them in. We'll, we'll get to them uh, in, in order. Um, this, this is the second time we've done an episode like this, uh, with the three of us, in fact. So um, we'll get to kind of catch up with our characters no, again. We're experts at it. <laughs> if you remember mm -hmm. last time we did this, we were actually uh, sort of in the midst of some big drama that was going on with our house being betrayed and turned against by House Lucas uh, when we were in King's Landing. And we had lots of speculation of what was going to happen and how that was going to unfold. Um, we were... I'll say partially correct on some of our, our thoughts. Uh, some of the outlandish things we thought might happen, like an invasion of our territory. Uh, mm. did, that did not come to fruition, <laughs> thankfully, well, in, yeah. in some regards. Fortunately, the Lucas yeah. did not plan out the long game. No. Um, no of course, really, I mean, this, this was around the time, actually only... I think last week was the anniversary of when I created the first conspiracy wall for a Sea of Spears. Wall, like just, um, just lots of blank sheets of paper across my bedroom wall with maps, <laughs> <laughs> miniature <laughs> mini dossiers about our enemies, and a flow, a whole big flow chart about right. Well, if this happens, we do this. And a, a thing that I hadn't accounted for was that. The Iris Danit would actually be the real Iris Danit. I'd like I was operating entirely on the assumption that she was a plant, that she wasn't the real Iris Danit. So that was like the that was a massive blind spot on my part that I didn't account for that in my in my flow chart. Everything was all based on how do we deal with this like pretender, basically. And it actually, a couple her being real questions. actually simplified things quite a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so we do have a couple questions. Uh, everything okay? Yes. Uh, I, I think upgrade-related computer problems is what's taken Rusty's computer out. Um, yeah. Nobody's heard anything um, like that. Uh, just Rusty's poorly computer. typed, I believe. Yeah, he got Everyone some new... Everyone except Rusty's computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was building himself a new computer, uh, upgrading some components, and uh, spent a long time yesterday, in fact, like the majority of the day, uh, troubleshooting uh, different parts to figure out what was wrong and what might fix it. Uh, and unfortunately, it, it seems like it's still plaguing him today. And he is due to call the manufacturer uh, their their hotline. And you know how fun that always is. So that's what he is mm. doing at the moment. Um, they believe they've narrowed it down to a motherboard issue, which is sort of uh, problematic. Fun. But hopefully... They can get a replacement somehow, and, and that'll work for them. Hopefully. Um, and as to brutal revenge on House Lugus, um, um, you guys in for that? Uh, I mean, we, I, I had the impression that we were just going to leave them alone unless they bothered us again. But I also have, like, a slight uh, theory that we might not have seen the last of them. Yeah, I, I think you might be right about that. And I think we can devolve or we can talk more about that possibility in a little bit. But 
uh, circling back to the question that was asked about revenge. So there's already been a, a pretty hefty punishment, right? Um, so the the yeah. scheming Lugai uh, Orton, he was sent up to the scientific uh, right? name Lugai Lugai. <laughs> <laughs> so so he's already g- gone, and the the sister um, <coughs> Marita. Marita, thank you. Uh, she was she assigned to the. We got, she, we sent her to the sect, so she'd become a nun somewhere. Yeah. And Orton's on the wall. And Nathan, we uh, he was the heir to the house, and he seemed to be the one who was kind of more like the patsy and wasn't really in on it. So he got off a bit lighter and has just been kind of left to do his thing in peace. Yeah, he was the and one that had I... to. Yeah, he he had to face the judgment in front of King Robert. He was yeah. in the battle of the seven. The, you know, the, the seven trial on, by seven. Yeah, thanks. The trial by seven. And, uh, and look, he, he lost. Flesh. <laughs> yeah. So well, even they... Oh, you can say it's for Lucas. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Uh, like, I was, like, yeah, I suppose, I suppose you could. But if, I mean, we know what it is. Yeah. is I, I think G. most people are going to know what it is. And so <laughs> even he didn't get off easy from this. So I... I don't. I, there's no good blood between our houses, but there's no reason to continue the hostilities. I don't think. I think if we just like go our separate ways, I think both sides would be happy about that. Now, with that said, and, and maybe we can <laughs> talk about this now. There, there is a looming mystery on our hands about a certain knight that showed up uh, that has been dubbed the Mystery Knight. And you guys are the mystery, <laughs> and we don't know who is under that helmet. Uh, we know he's a big guy. Yeah, like Rusty's description was like average height but bulky, was what he'd said. So, like my, I, even as I knew we were getting a mystery night, like I've, I've already been narrowing down. What like it's basically that description like totally took out like two people so, in my list. Um. So I'm, you you I'm crossed dead. them out and wrote Twink next to several possible candidates. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, it does make sense that Nate and Lucas could be the Mystery Knight. Yeah, the physical yeah. description is, is pretty close. Uh, it could be that Nathan wants to compete in a tournament because he, he needs something going for his, his house. Right? But, yeah, that's, but the history... Be, between us is pretty tenuous and so showing up in just like showing his face would probably not go over very well no. so being oh, masked yeah. if he if the if he's masked and he does not do well he doesn't have to show who he is and so there's no danger right but if he does well and earns some honors and shows uh shows his face, then it's maybe a little bit different, right? Because he's, he's won something, and it's a positive light, so even if there's bad blood between us, we probably wouldn't outright, like, chase him down, right? Yeah. So the <laughs> dynamic has changed a bit, so, like, there's potential there. Uh, one thing yeah, he too, is if he potentially wins, he could potentially marry Iris Dannett, which is kind of what his house was after anyways. I mean, like, that, that was, that's basically kind of where I'm at with it, that there's a He's kind of my front runner for who I think it could be. Yeah, I can't or, imagine Iris would want I, that though. I know, I know it's that like Qatar is asking questions, but he knows the answer to this question. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, like that—that's like basically who I got narrowed down to. That like I can see the motive for doing it, and it, it seems plausible, and he seems to fit the description. Um, but ever since Stannis said to Adam that he wouldn't be surprised if it was Varys in that armor, I've gone. Actually, now that I think about it, the Mystery Knight hasn't competed in a single event yet, so it could just all be that he's that it's Varys spying on us. Um, because <laughs> yeah. he is also bulky and of average height, so like it's it. It's so like really now for me comes down to like, does the Mystery Knight actually participate in anything? Because if not, it's probably it could possibly be a non-competent character. Um, 
Yeah, so, and I think we might find out more over the next two, you know, the final two days of the tournament, because so far, so far it's been pretty high-ranking uh, members of houses and heirs, and um, and I think someone who's hiding their identity would probably not try to go early on, right? Yeah, minimize the time that you're near other people, definitely. Right, because <laughs> if you win early you're going to be challenged and the more you're challenged, the more likely your, your helmet might come off the more. You might be expected to talk or say something or just have people around you more. And yeah. it's probably not what you want. I've, I've been absolutely, like, I've been wanting to observe the mystery night more closely, but I think because I said I wanted to spy on the mystery night, Rusty was like, okay, I'm going to make sure that you are too busy to do that. Um, so, cause I, I have thought about following the mystery night around. I've also thought about like finding some kind of bullshit excuse to go and talk to the mystery night to see if I can get something that way. Um, mm -hmm. Without, well, I'm pretty sure that Renly knows who it is, but he's not going to just say it if I ask him. So I have to, I have to figure out something well, sneaky. Even just find out where he's been sleeping might help you with some info. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and th this is this kind of feeds into actually like some broader stuff that Adam's doing about like trying to get some of the staff in the castle to work for him instead of Maker. So he might be kind of bribing people to go and find out more about the mystery night for him. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for that strategy. We, we've seen it uh, help me out a little bit. Yeah, like, I think p part of part of the inspiration was seeing you recruiting better. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good plan. Like, she can, you know, get a little bit of information that others may not see in a unique way. So I thought it was really fun. Uh, I, I, I do want to say, why don't we just talk out the, the various um, yeah, sure. possibility a little bit. So like, let's suppose he's the one wearing the armor and such. Mm -hmm. So like, what might you think he's down here to see about? Do you think it's just like a cursory interest in this rising house in the dorm? That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't seem likely to me. Him himself going to a place where he could just send anyone to come watch the events yeah that, that is the big kind of point against it is that Varys has people for this kind of thing it's in a similar situation to Lord Baelish like they tend not to do stuff themselves they tend to get someone else to do it for them so that mm -hmm. if, he, if he were going to come in person there'd have to be a really good reason for it but maybe there is we just don't know well it... exactly, exactly I mean the fact that the fact that Stannis is down here is kind of is making me feel like we're more scrutinized anyway because I feel like he's here to audit us in some way, um, or to, if not to audit audit us to audit Oris. So, it I, I wouldn't be surprised if there were other people from the small council taking an interest. Um, we know, I mean we know that kind of I guess mainly from out of character stuff that Littlefinger has kind of got his own agenda. Um, and certainly Stannis definitely doesn't like him, so they're unlikely to cooperate with each other on a spying mission. I think Kator has a good point, too. Um, if Varys is going to come in disguise, such a obvious, like, outlandish disguise that would draw attention, seems mm. unlikely. Yeah, no, like, I mean, I'm not saying that it's a likely one, but it, there was just oh, yeah, enough cast out. Um, and it would well, be an interesting development it would be an unusual well, well, and, and the thought that whoever it is might be working for Varys I think has a lot of potential as well yeah Even yeah. Varys himself. yeah I, th I think there's also been kind of thinking about like trying to think what Rusty would consider the most surprising reveal yeah but but but, but that path bad disguise <laughs> yeah I'm sure we can come up with plenty of uh, very intriguing <laughs> reveals. Um, yeah. yeah, like, Varys could have even come, like, himself without a disguise, right? So, like... Yeah, like, like, I think he could have come along without really raising very many eyebrows. I mean, we would all assume that he was, yeah. like, Though, that he had an agenda, but we, it, we wouldn't think it was unusual that he was there at all. But my yeah. only thought about that is that would take him away from the capital for weeks at a time, and I don't see him doing that. Well, Unless, as you state, there's some really good reason for it, right? Yeah, like, it's not that he never leaves King's Landing, he just doesn't usually do it. 
Um, I'd rather show how to be fast traveling across the fucking world, but uh, we can ignore that, I think. No, but I'm meaning, like, even, like, literally in the books, I don't think, like, he's in King's Landing literally every day of his life. Um, he has been to other places. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, fair. But he's definitely... My perception of it is that he considers being in the capital much more advantageous and just getting other people to, to do stuff. It, it, it is it's possible least, him I, or other kids. Good. Yeah, it's very likely that I read too much into a throwaway comment by a grumpy man. <laughs> I mean, I suspect that's the case, but yeah, if I'm Barris probably... is down here, that that to me says more than Barris is up to something. It says more someone else is up to something big, and Barris is working some sort of counterplay. Yeah, that to, mm. to me, my instinct would be if if Varus was up to something, I'd assume Littlefinger was up to something, and it was related. Um, because they're the re they're the two shifty shady ones on the. The small, all the, all, or I suppose on a gradient of shiftiness, they're at the the t the top end. So, uh, and maybe he does know something. Or raising, if we can put a little tinfoil on, if certain <laughs> powers that be, um, in our in our version of the timeline, are going to try to see that Robert Baratheon dies, a replacement Robert is not a bad thing to keep an eye on. The thing is, like, we're, we're quite a few steps removed, I think. I think, like, you're, like, what? No, no I, don't mean, I don't mean Lucaris. I mean Oris. Oh, don't, don't, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I there's no like, way I, anyone from yeah. the pro Baratheon <laughs> faction is going to come down to be put one of us on the throne. Oh, no, you've, uh, no, I misunderstood. You absolutely have a point. It just makes... Yeah. Uh, a certain bit now, of me. It, it would be Stannis because Stannis understands he's next in line. Yeah. Uh, aside well, from the children, we, we, you know, I, you know, this, this is where we you met a game a little bit in that, uh, at least for our discussion, Stannis probably knows that Robert's children are illegitimate. Yeah, that's. I, I think probably at this point he would at least have a suspicion. Um. Renly may or may not have a suspicion, but I don't think he cares that much. At this point, um, anyway. Can you, is... these... can you remind me then, um, if we're going to go down this rabbit hole, I, I'm sort of like forgetting then exactly why it doesn't, well, Sanus doesn't become king then. Like, is, does he choose not to mm, push his suspicions that the children might be illegitimate. Like, well, well, he 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 proclaims his right. He does in the show. Once Robert oh, dies, yeah. Stannis leaves town. Well, it's shown the book. Stannis leaves town. He then sends a letter to all the lords saying, "Those little blondhead bastards are not Robert's okay. actual children. So by rightful law, I'm the king." And then Renly goes, no "One likes you. I should be king." Oh, right. like, okay. I don't want to be king, but I am older, so a law says. Um, right, I had I forgotten that somehow. Right, yeah. so, he, so he does try to assert that then. Yeah, he does. I mean, he just ends up yeah. losing uh, his, his... Once Ridley dies in the main timeline, uh, he absorbs a lot of Ridley's forces, um, and then they lose the Battle of Blackwater Bay. Uh, and they're basically because uh, when Highgarden sides with the Lannisters, they lose that battle, um, and then they're scattered. And they don't show back up until they show up in the north, looking for whatever they're doing up there. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a big kind of thing with the with Stannis and Renly is that like the the people don't like Stannis really, whereas like. Uh, the people, as in, like, just like the the realm in general, don't like Stannis, but they like Renly. So, that, like, that kind of becomes part of Renly's case that people will actually follow him, whereas they might not follow Stannis. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, even though Renly's not actually like the brother who's kind of first in line, um, he's the one that has maybe got a better chance of uniting the realm against Cersei. Gotcha. Thanks. My memory 
because like I basically like binge watched all of this from having no knowledge. Some of the details don't come back to my brain very easily. Yeah. Um, so it, in our timeline, let's just come back to to our stuff. Um, like we don't have any suspicions of the children being illegitimate. So like in from our point of view, um, it, if there is some plot to get rid of the king, it would fall yeah, we, we, to the, Joffrey. <laughs> Joffrey. Yeah, and but while we certainly don't like him, like we wouldn't have any like reason to not just accept it unless right. we were called upon by someone who was challenging that claim, saying like I'm challenging well, the we want you to support me. You know, so, so, so you, you're right in in the paradigm that the Baratheons are rightful rulers of the Seven Kingdoms. <laughs> yes, uh, grandfather right. certainly doesn't see it that way, and um, and. Um, a wooly will, the strategy is not wooly will, uh, does not see it that way. And uh, I think I'm on their side. Yeah, a, 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 for for Adam's part, as far as Adam's concerned, it was a, like the rebellion's aims were legitimate, so he doesn't actually have any quarrel with it. Um, he's certainly not like, we must have another. Sure, but get us it, take your job. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Adam certainly wouldn't say that he's like happy his parents are dead and shit like that. You know, it's like it's not like yeah they deserved it. He was like, as far as Adam's concerned, keeping King Eris was going to result in everyone dying. So he definitely wouldn't have want. He wouldn't have rather had that. So as far as he's concerned, like Robert kind of did the realm a favor, um, or well, rather Jamie Lannister kind of did, um, and it might as well be Robert as anyone else. Because like, I don't think Adam would have would be able to say that anyone else would have done better. Um, but yeah, like Adam is definitely not pro Mad King. Yeah, I think Bela would have to be in the same situation where she doesn't think that Robert is the correct ruler. But the way it's been settled is kind of like, well, this is how things are now. And we kind of have to like live in this reality rather than what it should have been. Um, it, but that doesn't, uh... mean, it doesn't mean that she would pass on a good opportunity to rectify that situation, however. Um, yeah, and I would say when we start the campaign, I would have been of the same opinion. Um... But uh, it sounds like there are a few people in Westeros who are still feeling like maybe that shouldn't be the case. And I think one of them is Lady Olena. Uh, um, Although, I, don't I think Lady Olena's goal is to put one of her um, brood on the throne. Not I think inherently to the that's what, Baratheon. Yeah, I think that's kind of where she's been going from the start, really. I think she... I, mean, I think that's kind of what she's doing like kind of with her grandkids really is like trying to get them closer to power so that kind of checks out for her i'm i'm not sure what her opinion is like regarding the rebellion because house tyrell did kind of well out of that um like they're more powerful than ever now um not least of all because they've like kind of got closer ties to the to the throne yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. That uh, when, when you, I, I think what really changed my mind on the opinion was Wooly Will referring to him to grandfather uh, Robert that is as the usurper, and it was kind of like, oh, they're not done with this. No, like, to them, this is a, this is not settled history. Hmm. Who said that? Sorry. Wooly Will, the grandfather, uh, the, when mm -hmm. we had, they were we were alone with him at one point, and he referred to Robert as the surfer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, we, before he even explained who he actually was. Um, right. I, it's not surprising though. I mean, considering who Wooly Will is and grandfather, right? Like, in their time, it. That's who they were, right? Like, and 
my grandfather lived through the rebellion and our parents were there as well in that time and um and so like to them like it's all fresh still right because that's like where the prime of their life was basically well i mean not grandfather but you know what i mean and and so like to them it's still fresh for us we we've basically grown up in the world where that's already happens and we have to kind of just live in it and it's so, certainly colored our perceptions of course which is why we all kind of share that same you, uh, rebellious kind of nature to it but um, i mean i, I guess like I maybe know. like that we like well like when we were growing up that we didn't have it hammered into us that um so yeah the, like because we i mean it may just be like a kind of a thing that we didn't really intend to build in but we've not grown up like none of us have been calling him the usurper very much so it would imply that we've not had that hammered into us um perhaps as a, as a product of having to lie low for 20 years and blend in and not get noticed and that kind of thing does get you noticed so it could just be that that like those views have been kind of kept very private to, to protect us so to answer uh Qatar's question i think he is I think he is what? Can you the, say the question? That? Yeah. So, do you think Grandpa Maker is using your marriages uh, for a new rebellion against Robert, um, or at least the, the pre plannings for a potential one? I think so. Oh uh, yeah, I have. I don't doubt that. Uh, there's, there's probably like several goals, right? One is like to increase the standing of our house, and everyone wants to do that, of course. But like, especially tied in so closely with Lady Elena, you know that there's plotting going on to not just increase this, the stature of our houses, but she wouldn't plan directly with us if she didn't see potential to her, especially well, having her son proposed to our heir, right? Like, Reyna, the closest thing to the last remaining Targaryen royalty. Yes, like you know that's on Lady Elena's mind, so absolutely yes also I mean, uniting two very powerful regions uh, if they were to ever go to war the thing is though there are closer people to the targaryen dynasty than us so there's house valerian still has like people in it well like yeah but that. our mom was from that house yeah no i know but like her brother is still alive so that he's still he's like one step closer than we are. Yes, um, but if the <laughs> Tyrell men could marry Ben, that would solve a lot of other problems too. No, no, I'm saying like Marjorie's not married, so like this is what I'm saying is like. Yeah, our, you're right. You're our, right. There are other options. Yeah, like if she, if if like being as close as possible to Targaryen royalty was the, like the 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 top the the top priority, um, Olena would probably be trying to marry Marjorie to our Uncle Monteris. I mean, who's to say she hasn't thought of the idea? Uh, although <laughs> I don't think that's a really likely option. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, guess you could, yeah, I suppose you could count Orain, but because he's a bastard, he's probably not being counted, even though he's, like, the same and, and, level. And yet, and yet with known um, womanizer Orin running around, how many Tyrell girls are here? Oh, um, gosh. I mean, well, stuff happens. Stuff happens. Um, I say, like, when there's, well, how would old lady old lady have I, realized? I, like, Tyrells by blood, there's like two or three, and then there's a bunch well, that well, are like actual Tyrells, yeah. But, but, you know but, I mean. are, but as for like, but there's also the kind of coterie of girls who House Tyrell has been charged with finding marriages for, a lot of whom are related either directly or are related through House Redwine. So, they're Tyrell cousins, I guess, like the more extended family. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a strong Tyrell contingent. One you wouldn't leave a baby with. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, you're starting to really dilute the, the claim, though, at that point, because that'd be a, a bastard child of a bastard, really, at I, that I point, right? Um, Driftmark also doesn't get 
her many alliances. Um, it's not a, it's an old and noble house, but it's not a particularly powerful house, and a lot of that area is already sworn to a Baratheon one way or the other. Whereas we could potentially bring Gorn to a war. Right, because of our ties with uh, the prince, right? Especially after recent events. So, I, I definitely think Lady Olena is setting up these little Kingmaker matches uh, for a reason. Yeah, definitely. And if anything, I th like, well, it's kind of a good thing that we are being kind of invested in in that way. Um, because it, it, it will likely translate into us having more influence further down the line. It might be a longer game, but it's... Yeah. Um, like, you know, if we do have, like, the goal of eventually being in charge, that's not a bad thing to do to, like, get strong connections as a base to build on. Yeah, now, let's yeah. not overlook, though, that Lady Elena isn't doing this to put us into the top position. No. She's doing it for herself. Yeah, totally. I, I think it has the kind of... what the, the bonus side effect that we are is that like if Dorn gets kind of upset about it, she's got like an assuaging ally in Dorn who can like just as like they're a useful ally to us, like we, we can be one to them. Like the more powerful we are, the more the more you want powerful friends, you know? Yeah. Um, well also so keep in mind Lady Alina didn't just bring a match. Like that's probably you know uh, Raina and her son are probably like the, the stars. She brought, the match, her, but her house, she brought yeah. a match for everybody. Uh, I mean, I think Grandpa had, like, a bit of something to do with the matches. I think it's been correspondence between them, but Elena's really the powerhouse for that. If you're going to uh, bring a marriage match, you got to bring one for everybody. That's the rules. Uh, Our parties. <laughs> to which I'm going, like, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> I did not ask you to do this. Um... Anyway, yeah, there could be uh, a thousand reasons why she would or would not want those things, but I do think, I do think, at least from my character point of view, as, as my player, uh, as, as a player, I do think that is the goal. Yeah, like it, we are kind of just like, like a kind of bonus, I think. Um, if she helps us to become more powerful and influential, then that's just kind of like an extra powerful friend for House Tyrell but it's not the main goal but I mean she did like bring the heir to her house as a match for uh, for one of us so that's no small thing I'd like she definitely wouldn't do it unless it was like it, like if she objected to it she wouldn't have done it yeah but if she's bringing the, like, the heir to her house as an offer that's meaningful because that's like the prime bargaining chip, right? It's like the blue chip, and yeah, it, that's it, that's definitely like a statement of I want our houses to be friends, like indefinitely, basically. Yeah. You know, she's uh, going through a lot of effort to get a little of that grandpa make our D. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's my, I mean that's partly my theory of why we're not ever seeing him come to like watch any events because like they're busy. <laughs> I was actually kind of surprised when I went to visit him and she wasn't there. That, that, that was the cellar, not the bed chambers. No, I, I guess she I... sprawled out waiting for him to return. <laughs> um, like because pin me like one of your Andal girls. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, what I was expecting was for them to be in there scheming, basically. Um, I, mean, I haven't seen a whole lot of her either, so. So if if we if we're not seeing much of either of them, but we're not seeing them together either, what are they up to? Maybe that's the right angle to play this. What is she mm. up to? I, I feel like, I feel like we need, we need to we need to get a bit Scooby Gang. Yeah. So, start maybe investigating. maybe we can encourage Raina to go visit her future mother. Mother, grand grandmother-in-law. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it, it starts to get complicated at that point. But yeah, no, like I think if I think Reina would be a really good person to do that because like Elena seems to like her, or at least she insults Reina the least. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. Like I think that would. I think that would be good. I, I would certainly be interested in watching a conversation between them. Yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah. Reina kind of. Well, my impression of Reina is that I think she would she kind of aspires to be, kind of like Lady Elena. That, that being very, um, being a very strong presence and commanding and having people listen to you and do what you say and mm -hmm. uh, having that kind of quiet influence where you don't need to make a huge like you don't you don't necessarily have to like swing a sword about to kind of make your point yeah like, so, that's, um, that's nothing so um what does everyone think of the recent uh marriage proposal exceptions that it were acceptances that were going around any so questions just, about those or comments? Let's just go with like uh, the characters, like in order. So we'll, let's start with Reina's match. Is um, so the one she accepted aside. What did you think about the others options that she had? Um, the ones that she's not taking. Up. Yeah, like to the point where like I don't even remember who they are. Or well, her, her other options were Red Ron at Connington. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know what? I, even I've, like, managed to forget what the other one was. I've got the, I've got the final. Hang on. I have a list. Because <laughs> there was Willis, there was Ron at Connington, and another person, obviously. Yeah, so, like, I, I think Red Ron wasn't, like, a, a bad choice by any means, right? Like, I think, I think, I think he was... He would have been a bad match interpersonally, I think. Uh, yes. Oh, bit, yeah. I think she'd find him a bit too coarse. Uh, where's the letters? Damn it. Yeah, I, think... I, I, I've got a very bad filing system, so I, I've managed to. I think Rusty posted it <laughs> in our. He did post it somewhere, and I managed to completely lose it. Um. Oh, none of the, the uh, I don't think I actually saved it. Oh no, there, there it is. Find it. I'm pretty sure this is it. Oh no, I think these might just be Adam's ones. Yeah. Uh, oh no, okay. no, 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 no. I've got, I've got Raina's ones as well. Hang on. Yeah. So the first one was Willis's very, very long letter. Um. Oh no, is that the only? Oh no, it was only ones that wrote letters, and Ronit Connison didn't write a letter, and neither did the other guy. Um, so, yeah, like I've I've only got the letter from Willis. I don't have the others. Okay. No, okay. Garth Graysteel was one of the 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 matches for for Bela. Bela. Um, because yeah, yours were or Orion Waters and Garth Graysteel. I'm trying to. Right. I actually just like need to like pop to loo for a minute anyway, so I will try my very best to remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I think but, at least for you know, for what I could see, she basically ignored everything but the Tyrell. I, yeah, I I don't see how I don't see why you would pass up marrying Willis Tyrell. Um, she's the heir to our house, uh, a very up and coming house. And he's the, well, heir to be, basically, right, of their house. And it's that kind of, like, power in merging the houses. Uh, Quatar said in the chat that basically, like, our heir and their heir, like, merging, basically merges the houses, essentially, right? Because of, like, how yeah. intertwined that is. And of the, of the power structures that exist... Um, there's certainly much worse houses you could merge with, and there's certainly much worse matches in general that you could just match up with an heir, right? So I, I think that it's a no-brainer to make that choice, and I think it does really positive things for our house in general. It, it opens a lot of doors. 
it probably puts some extra obligations on us as well, which will be fun to kind of navigate. Uh, it will also be nice to have a sister with infinite money. <laughs> yes. And, and a, uh, a place to go when the summers are way too hot. We will, we have like a summer place to visit, um, away from Doran, where it will be a bit cooler. You can't get that warm of a sea where I'm going to be. <laughs> yeah, for you. Yeah. Um, On the coast. That's true. That, that's not a bad location. So do we want to talk about your matches then? Um, Valeda, I love Valeda. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. Uh, the, the worst part of this is having to tell Meredith Crane and oh. uh, Miranda Royce. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah sorry, yeah. but... I remembered. Did you? Yes. It, it, <laughs> my going away worked. Beric Dondarrion was her other match. Oh, of course. But it was like a. It, it was like a. We know that, like, we like him, that you like him. We know you're banging him. You could marry him, but it would mean House Dane would be your enemy, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we Which know that she's. Sad. Like they clearly like each other. <laughs> Yeah, we, we've seen Reyna be sad and kind of pouty a bit about it, uh, I guess. Uh, but she knows. She knows what she's going to be married still, into. I want to ride the lightning! It's <laughs> because like, she's, she's still like dressing to impress him specifically and stuff like that, so there's still totally something there. So it's kind of like, I mean, like, for me, it's just like, it's kind of sad because, like... What she needs to do is what I did, approach your future prospect with just a talk about having an open relationship from the start. Oh my gosh. I mean, the thing is, like, doing that by letter is a little more awkward. Because <laughs> she's like... <laughs> you got to set the expectations early. Like, Lakeris Lik Lik has been able to go and actually have a face-to-face -face conversation about that, which is the healthy thing to do. Whereas... Willis is in High Garden, so like she wouldn't be able to go and see him before the end of the week, you know, and have that conversation. And I'm not sure she, I'm not, I'm not sure she would even choose to if she could. I mean, I, I might be kind of, um, I might be wrong there, but um, I kind of get the impression Raina wants to kind of be the respectable face of the house to the Westerosi who have different values from us. Whereas the These rest of them got more leeway. The rest of us get more leeway because we're less and we're kind of further down in the pecking order. Whereas she needs to make us look good to the the rest of the realm who kind of some of whom don't like us. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it's sad that um that, that there was that trade off, but I think um, I think kind of Raina knows that it's kind of her job to make some tough decisions, and this just happens to be one that she doesn't like making, but kind of still has to. Yeah, heads of houses yeah. have to make tough decisions all the time, right? And and ones that you you definitely don't want to make, or that your heart leans one way, but you know it's going to be better to go the other direction. And this is definitely yeah. one of those for her. Yeah, this is a sort of self-sacrifice thing that's kind of part of being head of the house. So I think she kind of knows that it's, like, part of the job, so to speak. Yeah, I think it softens the blow to know that she'll be marrying Willis Tyrell and not some yeah. random other person, like Red Rod, yeah. for instance, right? Yeah, totally. She, like, she still... Willis Tyrell. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And at least, like... Willis seems like a thoroughly decent, sensible guy, so I think they're going to be quite well matched, to be honest. Um, like, even though like none of us have actually met him, I think we already kind of approve. Even though it's like he had like his very kind of long rambling letter, so he's clearly a fucking dork. But <laughs> well, also, I feel like he was a shithead. Lady Alita would have said like, "Here's my shithead. Um, a relative you could marry." <laughs> Well, the thing is, like her, like her favorite grandson's already taken, so she couldn't, she couldn't bargain with him. And I, th I think, well, my my theory of why like she wasn't 
trying to match up Loris with anyone is I think is a kindness on her part towards him because she knows that that would be traumatic and upsetting for him because he definitely wouldn't want to do it. So I, th- I think like the, that's one of, that's the kind of the hint that she actually has a heart under <laughs> under all the the bluster. And and yet though they were determined to give Adam quite a few options. The thing is, like, I mean, just because you've got lots of options doesn't mean you necessarily have to want any of them. Yes. Or, you know, like, just, like, I mean, I think it's it's certainly better than the alternative that they give him options, but he never asked them to give him any options in the first place. It's just a kind of, he's not obliged to be grateful for it, I don't think. Um... And yeah, that's that's a that's a difficult situation that he's not dealing with very well. Um, I very, like it very came very close in that last meeting with, uh, with Grandpa Maker that like he he very nearly just kind of flipped out him the, then and there because like Maker sensed that something was up that was more than what Adam was immediately addressing, and he, the best he could do was just kind of flee. Um, but he's he's gonna have to like talk to him about it eventually and actually make a decision one way or the other. Um, like, I like I know where it's going and, like, Rusty knows where it's going because we've kind of coordinated on it. Um, I don't, I don't want to say, like, a whole lot more on that because I'm, yes. I would be moving into spoiler territory. I think you just need to become a real good swordsman and join the uh, Kingsguard. Well, you know what? Like, that is... Like, that has crossed my mind. Not that exact no. thing. Oh, shucks. I'd love to marry all these women, but I <laughs> swore to a holy oath. Well, I mean, it's like it's not a terrible idea, to be honest. And um, I actually already kind of had a thing in my head that, like, I wanted... Gold cloaks before lady folks. <laughs> it's white cloaks are the king's guards. Oh, white oh, right, white cloaks. Yeah, you're right. Uh, my bad. The gold cloaks are the jumped-up cops. Although, it's funnier if you get it wrong while you're saying it. I mean, you know, like, whatever the appropriate cl- color is. I suppose, like, they're, like it, that's... Uh, it's kind of a shitty choice either way, because you're choosing whether to hang out with Merrin Tran or Alardim, and neither of them are nice people that I want to be around. Um, yeah, but I have actually, like, I do intend for Adam to, like, do a bit more like nightly training kind of like I think after we got through the the Vulture King and the Ironwood stuff where we actually had to go and like fight a war Adam's kind of going oh actually I like I'm not as sort of handicapped in these situations as I, as everyone said I was going to be and I thought I was going to be so maybe I can actually like start doing that stuff again because he did like it and like he had every intention of becoming a knight uh, but was just kind of told that, that you're your legs too fucked up you're not going to be able to do that anymore and he's kind of done some stuff in the last couple of months that kind of shows that like it's maybe not actually that bad and mechanically i bought off um one of the traits to do with that um to kind of have him have a progression where he kind of gets some of his confidence back and kind of learns similarly to how when jamie lannister loses his hand he, he learns to fight with the other hand you kind of think he so it's like what i've been kind of going with for Adam is kind of having him adapt rather than kind of like accepting a kind of depressing fate kind of going no I'll find stuff that I can do um and, and certainly like that's kind of translated a little bit into the marriage stuff where he's like I don't want to make a decision for myself so I will support my siblings in making their decisions um which was kind of partly why he started meddling with Lucaris's uh Completely matches unsuccessfully that, but it's Complete fail. But the thing is, like, he deliberately went into that because it was really low stakes. So he could just, like, practice scheming without it being something that, without there being a, a potential for hurting somebody. Um, and I think when he approached Mary about it, it, there was an understanding that it was a bit of fun that they were having and that it wasn't super serious. Although I really do feel for Luke having to let now down. Now you're this, you have to let her down. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I might actually That's do the that. the ancient <laughs> law of Westeros. 
Yeah, I feel, I feel like Adam is going to have to sort of take responsibility for his failure there. <laughs> I, I am so concerned about having these conversations. I am thinking of just ghosting these women. Um, that is not cool, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Miranda, who you made a big deal about calling her your friend. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. thought about it. I didn't say I was doing it. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I, I don't think I would have done any better in your situation. Because, like, if, if I had been, like, Lucaris and had, like, these three quite exceptional women kind of... The, like in, in the runnings, I don't, I don't think I would have been able to really choose. I'd have been like, right, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving for Essos, and I'm taking all three of you with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have proposed this on many occasions. Um... <laughs> well, we'll go become traveling players, and uh... no, no, I want to stay rich. Um... <laughs> Form a mercenary company and we'll be rich beyond our wildest oh, dreams. That's what we could do. We'll buy off the triarchy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, I, I feel like that was a good problem to have that you had like too many good options. Whereas like, I, I mean, I'm certainly not kind of not trying to compare them, but like, yeah, like I definitely didn't have that problem. There were like, a, there was varying degrees of acceptability, but like the whole like getting my brother to knock up my wife thing was a bit i think for me i was like oh, that's that's it getting into creepy territory that i'm like i don't want anyone to have to do that so it, well it's good well that, thanks for letting me have the conversation <laughs> i didn't have the, like you didn't even talk to me about it you didn't like if lucaris had asked adam like then he'd have been able to reassure him and you wouldn't have had to have that conversation but I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting it to come along, so that's why, like, when you said that, when you brought it up with Valena, I was like, "Oh man," because like, I was like, "And my brother wants this. He said it's his idea." I like, oh, I mean, I think I, I maybe um, fostered a misunderstanding by saying I appreciate your support, like Harris. <laughs> which, I which didn't is not even suggest it. Like this got thrown on me. Well, wasn't it like I, I thought that that was a thing that like Makar had suggested to to look. I don't think that Adam had actually come up with that himself. This was a potential idea that the Grandpa Makar and Lady Oleda suggested could happen. Yeah, like I think um, when I was uh, talking to Rusty about like when we were kind of sort of planning like what what we were going to do, um, what Rusty's wording of what what Lady Olena probably said to um like at, like the, like kind of Adam's prospects where where, where the, the phrase he won't keep you out of a good night's sleep <laughs> as a, as a kind of here's a bonus which I mean, I mean fair enough kind of trying to like turn it into a a feature rather than a bug um, it was especially kind of helpful when like Lady Shella clearly can't be arsed either. Um, just wants to like have tea and read big books and chill out and you know what, uh, big mood. Yeah. Um, but yeah, actually, like going into um, or, or, or am I kind of pulling things? Are, are we still? Uh, should we move on or um are we? I think we need to interrogate Erica. Yes. Yeah, we haven't talked about my matches yet. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. So, so there are three matches for me. Uh, the, the first one came as a surprise earlier in the series, uh, just after defeating uh, the Butcher in his Butcher's Cave, where we were, well, quote-unquote, knee-deep in blood. And, <laughs> the, and yeah, the, the, the blood level gets higher every time <laughs> someone tells it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're we're Balin Swan, Sir Balin Swan even uh, asked me to marry him right then and there without going through the proper channels, uh, but that doesn't bother Balin whatsoever. Uh, mm -hmm. Then of course we had the the wetter from uh, Sir Garth Graysteel who yeah, in the wetter yeah told yeah, me that yeah, I... if he didn't win the hand of Lady Dannet in the joust, 
he would happily, or I would yeah. happily do. I will do. And and then there's the I even guess. I guess you can less do whatever. good letter from uh, Orin Waters, uh, who I don't even think we should mention that there was a letter because of how bad the letter was. Although I have to say, any letter with "I would write more, but I can't read or write" is a a, a great move. I'm gonna have to steal that at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that so for Orion Waters, the that letter coupled with the fact that he just didn't really care all that much about showing up on time for like meals, just like a level of disrespect to me is unacceptable. Bela commands respect, and she expects it, especially on the battlefield and from those who are martially inclined. She expects that respect, and she's earned it. So, um, so that's just a, a huge. It, it's not going to fly for her, and so that's why the the disrespect in the letter from. Uh, Sir Garth was also kind of a, a deal breaker um, as well because uh, she doesn't want to play second fiddle. Like it, if he, if Sir Garth can't win a bride through jousting, then I will do. As if I'm not some big martial person that would need yeah. to be defeated or fought alongside. Yeah, it, it felt very much like he wasn't treating Bela like an equal. Yeah. Yeah, so that that was like a kind of that was the red flag uh, for me as well. That like, yeah, he, this isn't the right match. Um, but the, I think kind of uh, that was kind of like again part of like Adam doing a bit of meddling to try and kind of make make it obvious to Grandpa that he's not a good match as well, so that he would um, be to make him a bit to make him more approving of. Sir Balin. Um not that he's not approving already, but to like, like kind of, kind of, I suppose, like trying to make the in, the the prospective in laws like him more, so to speak. Like, just yeah. try and make things, just to try and make him look that little bit better. Yeah, because uh, in a low stakes way. You're right, because uh, Lady Elena's proposed match was Sir Garth Greystale and yeah. Uh, Grandpa Makar's proposed match was Orin Orin. Waters. So this was not what either of them had uh, been writing correspondence to each other back and forth all the time, right? So this was not in their plan. Grandpa had no way of knowing I would be proposed to on the battlefield, right? Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, So, like, as far as surprises go, it's kind of like, oh, I didn't consider that. Yeah. That's, this isn't a bad situation. I just, I just now have to write letters to Lady Elena, as well. And you know, it's, you can see that like machinery going on in his head, trying to like figure out where how this is gonna fit into like their plans and and all that. So it was more like a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, and I think just like if anything, like if if we can make Balin look. A bit better and more heroic it kind of softens that blow a little bit they're like yeah look like, like Bella, either of your choices but this one that you didn't consider is actually better than you think it is um kind of thing and i'm sure that like i mean for everything that i've seen about sir Bela is that he is a good and decent man and a, an excellent knight and does treat Bela like an equal and i think that's going to make all the difference because i think he's a good match yeah, absolutely. We, we spent time on campaign with him. If he was a piece of shit, I think one of us would have called him out. Um, oh, yeah. Probably totally. just Baylor would have done it before any of us got a chance. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, that's kind of thing. Like, that we. Just because of the way our family is, like, there's very little need for Lucaris or Adam to leap to their sister's defense because they can absolutely just do it themselves and would probably not thank us for jumping in. Um. Especially given that, like, even when Bela was injured and like we were kind of fussing over her, she was like, "Fuck off! <laughs> Stop suggesting I ride in the carriage. I'm fine." Yeah, 
My, my arm's only hanging off a little yeah. bit. It, even when I mean, kind of wasn't fine. Like, we'll be honest here. Uh, yeah. Mechanically, she was not fine. She had taken a, a wound, one of only a couple she can suffer before she is outright dead. So, I mean, you could... She was like one third of the way to being dead, dead. And yes. So but she was not it, it, fine. <laughs> but still, it's you know, all right. Uh, if I had to, I would have. I would have fought her into the carriage, and uh, I could definitely <laughs> win if she's wounded. Yes. Two thirds of the right. <laughs> if she had been on like on one more wound, yeah. she would have put up the same resistance, but she probably would have given in to it. Um, I'm going in the carriage, not because you talk to, but because I want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> it's, to... it's just because we're, just because we're, like, you know, we care about each other. But I, I, I just very much just like, it was the kind of vibe of, like, but it's fine. Like, my bleeding was internal. That's where the blood's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. No harm, no foul, right? Yeah. Quite. So, and uh... we won. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so I, I have like I, uh, the last thing that happened in the game was Vela was telling Grandpa that she had made up her mind and that the the next day the next morning uh, she would tell uh, Sir Balin about this and I have a, a a cool scene for how this is gonna go I think you'll you'll all think it you'll like and think it's uh, particularly fitting. Uh, as well, so Excellent. it'll be fun. I was really hoping to like see some of like those kind of scenes from the three of you. Of like, like I actually want to, uh, uh, like, I want to see like tell your match that you've made the decision. Like, <laughs> I mean, like Luke has already kind of done it, but did it in a in a way that was like it wasn't quite as romantic as one would hope. <laughs> um, uh, especially with the like, oh, I mean, eat, like. Regardless of whether you want to marry me or not, do you want to be on my melee team? <laughs> was, yeah, I'm one member up. You, you yeah. both have nobody. Oh, I, I'm not approaching anyone about a melee team. I am one to be approached. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to be in the melee, so I'm not going to be approaching anyone. I mean, I, I suppose I could approach on someone's behalf, but I'm, I'm just so, going to let it happen. So Bela kind of assumes that she's not going to be on a melee team just because we're hosting the tournament. Um, so she kind of, uh, she knows that she can't really participate in a lot of the things. And she started out as the champion, right? So like, it's not like she volunteered to like ride in the joust herself. Um, yeah. Except for like putting herself at the beginning. But like the assumption was that someone would defeat her along the way and take her spot and so she was go ahead I'm sorry go ahead all right um so she was assuming that she wouldn't be on a melee team but she's kind of hoping that someone asks so that she could like well it wasn't my idea someone was asking <laughs> me to fight in the melee so uh That's wanted to be a good host i will oblige that's a good idea i actually thought of a way that we can make it less uh, less of a faux pas is that if any members of House Nymerian like as in like any of the four of us like were to participate in the melee that we would like if our team won we would waive our winnings which makes being in our team more attractive because it means you would get a bigger share of the winnings because there'd be like two or three people right. who are not actually taking anything just a an idea um to just, like maybe try and get some of the get some people competing to be on our team oh yeah no that's that is a that is a good point i think uh rusty did mention something about like maybe like having us be on a few different teams um was another thought yeah i think it's probably a good idea for us not to uh be on the same team as another family member as well yeah yeah that ma that makes sense but we'll see how um, it plays out. Um, I mean, I think like who, whoever's on Oris's team is probably gonna win. <laughs> He's just gonna mow people down because that's what he does. Yeah. Um, I mean, like uh, though for um, like, do, do you have any like favorites for like people who you think are gonna win? Um, 
any particular events? Like, is there a, a jouster you think's gonna get into the final five, or like these? Who, I can't remember. Like, the archers were kind of down to named NPCs now, mm-hmm. um, and it's basically like Sir Balin, Sir Relisand, and Little Robert. I think. I think there's. I think it might have been a one. I can't remember if Aunt Ellie is in it as well. I think yes. she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she is. So it's kind of between those four. Um... Although Aunt Elia clearly doesn't seem like she, like she's doing it so casual, like, oh, I'm not even trying. Which might mean that she wins it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think she might win. Uh, but there are, like, Sir Balin is also a very excellent shot with a bow, so I wouldn't be surprised to see her in it. Yeah. Um, and I will win the melee. Well, you know. It's my goal. I mean, good luck. Yeah. You're going to need it. If you're not on, if you're not on Oris's team, <laughs> good luck. Yeah, I, I am yeah. working on Fighting Five. I don't have it yet. Well, though, I mean, I think, like, I think, wouldn't it be like, kind of like once the, is it going, is it going by like team when like once like all the other teams are eliminated or is it going to come down to like one to one like the last I assume it'll be a team I, I don't think it'll be like oh I'm in the end turn on everyone because yeah like not like in kind of most most of the melees they start out in teams but kind of as it gets to less and less people you can start betraying your team members and kind of going every man for himself well I'm not gonna put a betrayer on my team I uh no, I mean it's not. It's not. It's not a betrayal, as in like. Anyways, I see. Was Orton Lucas? Um... <laughs> Robert. It's not a serious betrayal. It's like just part of the game. That at some point it's you have expected. to like. Yeah, especially if no one else is left on your team, you are fighting for yourself at that point because most melees do have to come down to one person. We we are different this time because it's fi- it's down to the last five. Um, but you can still totally just turn on people if you want to. There's no rules that say you can't do it. It would be considered bad form to do it early on. <laughs> the air bud rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's how Lynn Corbury got away with it. There's yeah. no rule that says he couldn't, like, take yeah. out Sir Garland and oh, uh, Brock John Price. <laughs> yeah, when so, I wrote the rules I, for the I, melee, I, I basically I, just said, like, same rules as the one we had in King's Landing, just because I, I, I couldn't be asked to really write down an intricate set of rules for it. Yeah, no, that's, that's totally fair enough. So, like, the, the way it will be then is, like, it'll, yeah. it will be down with, like, who are the five last remaining people. So there will be some, like, it'll definitely start, like, we'll start out with teams, but it's probably not going to finish mm-hmm. as teams. It'll just be whoever, what, whoever the last five are. There's no rule that says a dire wolf can't participate in the melee. Oh, gee. <laughs> I suppose. Um, wow, what a reference. No, wait, it's, it's, it's probably... Um, there's probably some rule that's written, like... Uh, it'll be the wording that it'll refer yeah, to. Yeah, but like by a kind Grandmaster of Pycelle tells us the rule, it'll be over. <laughs> Actually... Um, <laughs> well, Pycelle's not here. The tournament of four d two. Okay. <laughs> there We're gonna was... cut that off now. Robert, you're making him sound like he's doing a tricky shit. He just well, sounds so strange there. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, he probably is. You know what he is. Um. Let's move swiftly. We've <laughs> probably been shitting this whole time. Oh no! Please so, don't. So which big knights do we still have left for the joust, right? Um, well, Sir, Sir Loris hasn't jousted yet, and we're pr- I'm pretty sure he's going to challenge Oris as a, as a matter of principle, because he beat Renly. And, I, you know what, fair yeah. enough. Totally fair enough. Uh, if anything, Adam has a vested interest in him beating Oris. Um, and, like, Sir Loris might be significantly smaller than him, but he's, like, one of the best like turning knights in the realm, so that's pretty that would, He's fucking strong. I'll be honest. That's, that's going to be a really, really difficult. Like that's going to be a difficult match 
I think I'm going to have trouble betting on that one. Yeah. Did Sir Balin joust yet? No, he yeah, hasn't. I don't think so. Because yeah, I was trying to, because I was trying to get him and Grace Steel to joust to like try and make Balin look good. Because, uh, well, b- based on the assumption that uh, Sir Balin will wipe the floor with Garth Grace Steel, because <laughs> Garth Grace Steel, like, as I understand it, is more of like a knight knight rather than a attorney knight, and Balin seems to be a wee bit better at the tourney stuff. Although he is also like a really good yeah. just actual knight. He seems to have a, like a bit more of a, uh, bit more. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but um, like he's not just a turning knight, but he has a bit of like turning knight sensibility in him. The fact yeah. that he's doing a, a, an archery contest is kind of a sign of that. Oh, so um, we have a good question from Quatar now. Uh, yeah, would, that's a good question. Would Bela be more upset? If Balin challenges me, or doesn't challenge me, and like um, this is oh, um, I I think she would be upset if he challenged someone besides her, if she was like still there, like. I, she wouldn't be upset if if he waited, and um, like wanted to wait till like some other time. So like she isn't mad that it's taken a while to get for him to come up to to do any jousting. Yeah. But if if she's still like a viable jouster, and he doesn't challenge her, I think she'd be like, "Hey, come on, <laughs> what are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, well, like, this, this, this is like part of your lover's banter. Yeah, she she would definitely like make a point to be like, "Hey, what, what the hell? <laughs> why? Why would you fight me? Why would you fight me?" <laughs> it's, it'd be a little bit playful, but also like a but, but seriously. <laughs> I love that. That's brilliant. I, I noticed as well from the. I just had a quick glance at the tourney guess when you were saying like are there any other kind of big players that have yet to go I've noted that um, in the list for Dorn Obarasand is listed for Joust and Melee but hasn't done either yet okay yeah so that'll uh, be interesting that, that was that was a thing I noticed uh, 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 Garth Greystio hasn't is, either right? uh, yeah, I, I just thought it was particularly notable because he Rusty hasn't written that at, like what uh, beside each name he hasn't written what things they're going to be in. He's only written it next to the three sand snakes. So that's why that's why it stood out to me there. Okay. Um, we've like we've, so Paramin has jousted. Um, so has I think uh, Lord Rowan did as well. Um, Beric Dondarrion has as well. Um, I'm kind of just looking through, yeah, and Bryce Karen. So like, kind of the, the ones that are the sort of the biggest names that I would think of off the top of my head that they've all jousted so far. Um, I think there's also just ones. There's some who have come along who aren't here to compete. They're here, like, for other reasons. Um, so I think some of the some of the kind of the more high powered. Um, like the lords and stuff like they're not all going to actually be competing they're more here to kind of see other yeah. people do stuff make I, net, do network a couple came to mind so some of the fossilways right yeah john so fossilway and I, I think yeah uh there's also like the the, the rowdy frat boy type uh <laughs> yeah, brothers <laughs> yeah yeah it's the brax house brax yes i i do plan to reach out on somebody next session i just haven't figured out who yet Yes, so that's a good point I was going to bring up after we kind of talked about who hasn't gone yet, is that um, I specifically uh, said that it was okay to challenge again uh, a, a different one of the uh, the banners. Yeah, um, yeah. I, w- I would say it would probably be sensible to not allow like challenging the same banner twice. Because then, yes. then you can just kind of keep going until you get a result you want, and that's like maybe a little bit unsporting um, yeah. in this situation. But you could, I, I could totally 
uh, yeah, I think it's probably fine to challenge like different people. Yeah. So in, in that vein, I, there's probably plenty of people here who will see uh, attempting a second challenge is kind of not really good spirit. It's kind of like that unwritten social rule of who jousts on the first day, who can joust on the second day, right? So I think there'll be plenty yeah. that'll have that in mind. Like, no, I gave it my one shot and yeah. uh, that's enough. So who, who do you think might be someone who would joust for a second time? And of course, Luke just said he wanted to joust. And of course, you didn't challenge anyone to begin with. You started off as a champion. Right. I mean, the thing, I mean, the thing that's kind of interesting about that is that like Luke has already picked who he wants to marry, so doesn't have an interest in marrying Iris Dannett, so it's a point of pride then, rather than the end goal for getting back into the champion seat. I just I just want to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's, that's, that's fair. And if, if there's some scumbag who's in the running I can knock out, uh, I'm fine. That's, that's a very good point. There are definitely knights that I would, that I'd be like, yeah, let's I don't want them so, to yeah, I had a destiny point left, but I have a, 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 the trait to re-roll stuff. I did not use those last time because the knight I was going against did was not basically a piece of shit. Yeah. I decided that if I if he was going to go against somebody who he just thought was like, oh, this is no good for for for, for Lady Iris, uh, I'd go fuck them all out. And yeah, that, I didn't, that didn't come up, so it was like, okay, well, that's fine. He yeah, lost this little Terrence Square. I guess, like, when, if when we're thinking about who's likely to put in multiple challenges, I guess we have to think about, like, who's who's got an interest in the end goal. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think Beric Dondarrion would challenge again because he's not actually looking to be in the final five because um, he's already betrothed. So what you're looking at is the ones who are unmarried, who are probably... Also, are probably ones who aren't heir to their house. So like the second and third sons are probably the ones to watch there, because mm -hmm. um, they're the ones that have got the most to gain. Or someone um, um, from a house who has a second or third son that they want to yeah. marry off, right? Yeah, yeah, good point, good point, yeah. They could be jousting on behalf of someone else. Um, I can't remember... Like, like, who was um, the, the knight who challenged, I think it was Lady Valena, just to show like his daughters that he could, that they could Ryder Curry's? That was very sweet. Oh, um... Oh, no, is that Lord... Was that Lord Grafton? No, wait, hang on. Ah, damn it. I closed the file. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'll, I'll need to just have a quick scan through the list of who that was, because I think it was one of the Reach Knights, actually. I think it was, um... I think, was, it, was it maybe Lord, Lord Rowan has three daughters? Or, so, or, did, he, or did he challenge Bela? I think it, I think it was Lord Rowan um, that was because like, yeah, he has three like, daughters. Yeah, yeah, he's married to Bethany Redwine, um, so he's like he was definitely jousting, not on his own behalf, but I'm pretty sure it was him that made that who actually like said the the thing about like like ladies can joust. But did he did he joust against Bela or was it Valena? I think it was Valena. Yeah, I don't think I just against a Rowan. Yeah, I, th I mm. think it was it was um, it was really nice. It was just against. So, so I have a question that it's gonna make um, <laughs> it's gonna make Ash mad. Um, oh, no. Do you guys I, think that Oros is gonna marry Iris Dennett? No. It's my it's my my answer is no, and it's not just a. It's and it's not just a hope. Not no, because if. Um, if uh, we're getting towards like the last day and Oris is still a champion, Adam will be having words with Iris Dannett of like, could you please not pick this one? <laughs> uh, step off my man, bitch. He's not gonna word it like that. And the thing is like, Adam knows fine well Oris is not his man and is never going to be his man, but he's still like- She does have to know that. <laughs> there's a bit of, no, I suppose I don't, I don't know that because I don't know what will happen in the future. And like, I think, I can't remember who I said this. this no, no, it was it, it was one of you. Actually, like I said this the other day to some friends that like I have a there's a there's a part of me that has a deep deep hope that Rusty's playing a long game to troll me. <laughs> <laughs> and that, like 
ten years later in game, uh, the, the, there's going to be a big reveal. Um, but I can't operate, or I, I, like I can't in character, like operate like that because it's meta for a start. Um, it's like a fan so, theory, right? Yeah, totally. Like that's that's like it's my 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 little believey, <laughs> it's my my little wish. Um, that we'll uh, just say that when this ship sinks, um, Adam be the last one off it. Yeah, like Adam, Adam will go down with the ship, so to speak. Um, Probably won't be off it at all. But it's fine. I mean, I mean, it would just be nice to like have have a ship be successful at some point. Um, but I, like, I mean, I did this to myself by saying by saying very early on to Rusty that like I, I do definitely want Adam to find happiness with someone, but I don't want it to be too quick. I want him to work for it, and Rusty kind of made me regret my decision um by going yeah like you're, you're definitely gonna have to uh wait for it um so I, I do i do think that's an excellent question in the chat about when we get done with this yeah 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 so uh Quitar actually had a couple of good questions in the chat uh follow up to the one about bela and surveillance jousting um Quitar asks if bela would be upset if bela knocked her off her horse and to that no uh she wouldn't be upset with it she'd want another opportunity at some point to uh, return the favor really is what that would be and then uh also from quitar uh would bela change her mind about sir garth uh if he were to challenge her and and didn't hold back in the job so basically like treated her as a uh, someone worth of respect and, and that sort of thing. I, I think her opinion of him would definitely change. I don't know if uh, she would change her mind about marrying uh, Balin, though. So I, I think it might be a, like a little bit too little to wait um, at this point. But it it certainly would improve her opinion of him to to give a a good fighting joust between them and if you're going to ask if she would be upset if he unhorsed her uh probably not upset i think she would be i think that would change her opinion more if he was able to defeat her and it didn't seem like he was holding back or anything like that yeah that, that seems to be the really kind of that seems to be like a really crucial point in it is like if they hold back and treat her um, you know, if, if they kind of don't treat her like an equal, that seems to be like the worst thing you can do is to like not appreciate like how how kind of strong and capable she is. Yeah. Um, so, it, if he would hold back and Bela unhorsed him, they would pretty much be like done for him. Like, it, it, yeah. she'd basically like write him off as someone who didn't respect her and got put in his place, and it would take something pretty grandiose. For her opinion to change on him based on that very cling on like you have to fight fiercely and with honor or you're worthless <laughs> yeah basically just like any other northerner just underestimating and trying to treat her dainty and didn't respect her and yeah. uh, got put in their place because of that and so that's where they belong on their butt yeah. it's like literally like, i guess the one I don't know if I would call it a redeeming feature of Sir Marin Trant, but like it's like the one thing that wasn't awful about him is that he like mm -hmm. didn't back, even though yeah. it was in a really kind of awful way. Um, he at least like fought her like he would anyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Like as like a fighter, there there's respect there. Like she knew it was a going to be a tough fight, and it was. So the thrill of the fight was there. What she was not thrilled with about him, like outside yeah. of the the fighting arena, you know. I guess there's kind of, there's there's two components there. There's respecting her as a warrior and respecting her as a person and like he there was one of those that he crucially didn't do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he said nasty shit. So he gets a song <laughs> written about him. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a song. <laughs> yeah. Fuck around, find out. Can we redo the house words? Uh, <laughs> I like that. 
I feel I feel like that's what we need to change to is fuck around and find out, <laughs> or at least or at least like Bela's like personal sigil words need to be that. Yeah, that's that's a very Bela <laughs> phrase. Um, How's Bela that... of Philly? Fuck around, find out. <laughs> Where you don't... <laughs> uh, your sigil needs to be great. <laughs> Whereas, so, whereas um, I feel like Adams would be like a little chibi rabbit with a knife that says, do not fuck with me because I will cry. Oh, <laughs> the sigil is, is Britty's head on a field of verdict. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, let's... Um, let's yeah, see. um... I was I, I had a, um, a question kind of slightly kind of winding back to Grandpa Maycar that um, he mentioned uh, while kind a of thousand having... he'll live till he's a thousand don't say otherwise <laughs> um, y- your your lips are God's ears I guess um, I'll, I'll, yeah anyway uh, he it, like in his kind of it wasn't quite an argument with Adam but it was definitely a kind of heated conversation. Like he mentioned that we didn't need to know about um, what threats were, um, like what things were threatening the house, which to me kind of indicates that something is definitely a threat to the, like an imminent threat to the house. And I'm wondering if you have any kind of theories about what might be an upcoming threat to the house. Uh, I don't know uh, everything. I, I do share your <laughs> suspicions though, because if there wasn't a threat to the house, uh, it, the answer wouldn't be "Don't worry about it," or "You don't need to know." The, yeah. the answer would be like, "Things are fine." Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Imagine if you're a little kid and you're like, "Oh, I can't sleep. There's a monster in my closet." Your parents are like, "Don't worry about it. The monster's fine. Go to bed." Well, it's, yeah, it's not even that. It's, it, I think I think it was along the lines of the the monster need not concern you. It was, it was kind <laughs> yes. of. So it was acknowledging that there is a monster, but that he's not going to tell you about it because he, for, for whatever reason, um, and that, that is definitely not sitting right with Adam. And he's probably going to talk to Reina about it because she's the one who it probably like affects most. Because like, if anyone needs to know about threats to the house, it's her since she's going to be running it someday. Yeah, this wasn't a conversation with just Adam though, right? Yeah, Adam was just there, but like Adam will definitely be talking next session to his siblings about that conversation, um, because like, as far as he's concerned, there's a big alarm bell going off there that he needs to alert. Like, <laughs> at least needs to have a quiet word and say, "I think there's something going on that Grandpa's not telling us about." Especially because there's a strong possibility that he might tell one of you, but not tell Adam, because like he's still kind of. Uh, like I'm still seen as the child of the group. I, so I, I'm, with, I'm with Picar in the chat. I think he's setting the stage for rebellion, and the concern is that uh, his plans yeah. are discovered too soon. I definitely wouldn't rule it out because, like, he certainly hasn't given up. I mean, he's definitely. I'm pretty sure he's still a loyalist, so it wouldn't surprise me if that's what he was angling for. Or at least, or at the very least, like getting powerful enough to, like, I don't know, establish a, a like a, a new kingdom or something. You know, maybe his designs are on Dorn rather than the Iron Throne. Or yeah, I've got no idea. But yeah, like uh, he definitely wants more power. Um. Yeah, it's, it's, I... playing, it's playing a dangerous game there. I think that's probably right. Uh, I mean, based upon the marriages that we've been talking about, right, it's certainly yeah. setting us up for some coalition in regional powers coming yeah. together. And so there's got to be something that's going to happen based on that. Um, it's... Yeah, it might be. And it might be something that draws on like the canon events or it might be something totally out with those um but yeah like that's a compelling theory certainly um and i I don't think that we have completely gotten rid of our enemies either i think we definitely still have some we just they haven't 
made themselves very known yet. I'm pretty sure that there are some prominent houses in Westeros who are not comfortable with our rise. At the I moment. also wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Anders was pl was plotting with somebody who pulled out at the last minute and left him to hang. Right, so you think there was someone else in that Ironwood conspiracy, possibly? I wouldn't be surprised. Um, now, maybe it was just the Luguses and they got caught and couldn't help, but he was making... Uh, Ironwoods were making movements like they had some serious backup and they just didn't. Yeah, just, like, that's a good point that, like, they seemed like they had overwhelming force and then that just vanished... Like, I think somebody didn't come to their aid that was supposed to, and we just don't know. Well, if you remember, if you remember the the king basically said like, "This house, House Ironwood, is like traitors, basically." Yeah. And that. Fuck them. Like, yeah, and so like, if you're a banner house at that point, do you really say, "Yes, we're going to commit to, to right. this," or are you going to say, "You know what? The king just said that this house is." evil is is the bad and so now yeah. that releases us of our banner house i mean we absorbed well, one I, of their I, banner I do. house i do agree but i think not banner house but i think he had some big ally and maybe when they sloppily ran the they got caught basically red-handed supplying the vulture king maybe their ally pulled out possibly yeah his movements were like he was going to win a war and he just didn't have any backup. I'm wondering then, because, like, Grandpa Maker, like, did kind of make some grumbling noises about, um, about Bela, like, basically kind of picking a Stormlander to marry, and that Reyna's, that one of Reyna's choices was possibly a Stormlander, and he seemed uncomfortable with getting too connected to the Stormlander. Now, there is historic precedent for that because Dorn and right. Dorn have been fighting for quite a long time so it could just be that or he oh. could that we don't about like maybe a Stormlander house that was maybe in with the Luguses or um, and possibly also with Ironwood yeah the maybe one. a combination of, of us befriending somebody the right people and the Lugus and scandal but, but yeah. I, I, I would be surprised if that enemy is still out there and yeah yeah, that's failed, but they still have probably not our best interest at heart. Yeah, I'm, I'm now feeling like I need to go and get like <laughs> get my maps out and go, right, here are all the houses, the houses of the Stormlands that have come to our tourney. Is there anyone who stands out who's not here? That kind of thing. Not a terrible idea. Yeah. yeah. That's the <laughs> and so, I, I mean, I have a blank conspiracy wall up ready for something to so, go on it. So Quintar suggests, uh, could, could he be planning a coup against House Portal? I don't think so. He seems too close to House Bartell. House Bartell support seems our family. to our position currently. Um, I'm not saying no, uh, but it would be a, a weird level of betrayal for how integrated they are with us at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's, especially given, like, I mean, we are, like, blood relatives of House Bartell, yeah. so it's that would be unlikely. I could see him trying to get us to, to have, like, the top two or three spot in most powerful houses in Dorne because like it's currently I mean, like we Martel, have that now. Martel, Mar I mean we pretty much have at the moment because yeah like like there's House Martel and then House Dane and then probably us now that we've gotten rid of the Ironwoods. Yeah, um, yeah. Sure. I was thinking House Dane. I'm not sure where they fit in comparison, but Ironwoods yeah. were nominally the number two house. Yeah, I'd like. I don't think. I certainly don't think he wants to make an enemy of House Dane, but he may want us to become more powerful than them. It certainly seems to me that like his designs are more on getting us more powerful in Westeros because we're already pretty, we're sitting pretty solid in Dorne at the moment. There's also the question of what's going to happen with the Ironwood lands at this point because we've been waiting to yeah. find out who they're going to be given to, uh, yeah. who's going to run it, that sort of thing. I think just now, like, oh. it's I think just now. Um, Prince Doran kind of has the final decision on who they go to. Well, I mean, it's really actually the king that probably decides, but it's that's 
nominally outsourced to Prince Doran to decide because it's in his territories. Well, well um, we nominally, nominally the um, Drinkwater waves are ours now. Yeah. So, so what? What he? But like, we kind of we don't have it official yet because I think what um, I think the current ongoing thing is seeing if there's anyone with a claim to House Ironwood that's better than ours, basically. Because um, we could have just gone, well, this is ours now, and there would have been sort of some argument about that at least. But there are like there is still a living Ironwood, so it's probably um, like she's probably got the strongest claim. But I think what um, Grandpa's looking to do is like get her married off to someone who's like who we've got some kind of influence over, so that it's kind of our land, even if it's not. Right. So two, two things. One, we need to remember to um, discuss with her older sister possible uh, marriage prospects. Yeah, I've got it in my to, it's right at the top of my to-do list now of like talk to Enos um, yeah. about... I, I also she... suspect um, some of House Ironwood's lands will be divided up to other houses just to kind of divide it up. Yeah. Um, I, I think we'll probably end up inheriting um, um the drink water just directly as a banner house yeah. um and we'll probably get some of that land as the actual castle though i could see a situation where um where the ironwood girl and whoever she marries uh retake that land as a new house ironwood with much reduced land possibly yeah like that could make some sense um like basically as long as nobody contests it that's probably how it's going to shake out um, but like I don't, unless an ironwood we didn't know about comes out of the woodwork, we're probably fine. But I, I would like to get at least another banner house out of it, uh, other than drink water. I think we I mean, deserve that. We, yeah, I mean we've all but absorbed them already anyway. So I think they're kind of by the time it comes to kind of decide what's going to happen to them, I think we, we're able to make a case of like we've been um, kind of like running them and they've been doing stuff with us for a while now like mm -hmm. they're integrated now so we should have them so it's a kind of uh it's a bit sneaky but it's fine <laughs> is Drinkwater looking for to potentially marry uh iris um didn't he get mm -hmm. knocked out? he did get knocked out but i i suspect he was he interested yeah yeah you could totally re-challenge someone um I mean, I, I think, like, Gareth Stringwater seems like a nice guy. I think he deserves a break, to be honest. I think uh, he's, if I'm, if it wasn't down to, like, uh, like she picked from the five champions, he's one of the people I would have actually put forward as a as a, as a match. Um, um, well, their marriage would certainly tie her closer to our lands. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we'll get drink water. We, I, if, if there's another house we could also absorb, that would be good. We need more armies. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's the only thing we're, like... All of our kind of our successes so far have been like allying with other houses. It would be nice if we had a, a good enough standing army of our own, but let that will come. We're we're building up. We're absorbing. I would other like to work on that. Yeah, we're um, getting there. We just yeah, need money yeah. to kind of do yeah. that, really. Yeah, we just need to poach some more people from other houses. We just go around. Oh, by the way, I heard your uh, liege lord is a dick. Yeah, he was probably well, trying to iron with you. They're... That means to betray you. Um, I really like. I actually like um, asked Rusty about that like, a little while back. I was like, "How bad form is it to poach people from other houses?" And I was like, "Well, there's no law that says. I mean, you. I mean, you can, but they would probably not like it if you did, <laughs> unless you had like a really, really good reason to ask for a specific person." Yeah, Balaam, Balaam, okay, fine, we'll just pop out new soldiers. Well, I mean, I guess, if, like, being married to someone in House Swan kind of means that House Swan is, like, your ally. Um, so it's not the same as them being your own army, but you can sort of... In that kind of setting, you very rarely have an entire army of your own... Um, you have like your your banners and your allies who and you all kind of club together um because having a standing army is really expensive what's a I mean, faceless man cost a faceless man oh at least at least a thousand gold if not more lots like wow. like 
A thousand gold is five wealth points, and that's enough to hire a maester for life. So, like, to, so I reckon a faceless man probably costs at least that. But that's just purely. It. You know what? I wonder if not, you know, I'm going to see if the book has anything about that. I don't think it does. Um, then they so, have missed a trick because I want to know. <laughs> it, so it'll be a lot of money, and also it's probably not easy to do, especially not if you're not in Bravos. I reckon. It's easy. We, we go to Bravos. We get, we get a loan from the Iron Bank while we're there, and then we use it to pay the <laughs> bed. And if we ever need, um, uh, we we get enough loan for two faceless men. That way, if we ever default the loan and brought the Iron Banks and the Faceless Man after us, we get the second Faceless Man to take him out. <laughs> That's um yeah. The, the, there's definitely there's not a list in the there's nothing in the index that says Faceless Man. So I'm looking assassin. There we go. There's that'll maybe help. Um, see if it so says there anything there. is some other land that we still need to learn the fate of. And that is Cousin Will. That's true. That land doesn't have an heir, and uh, as far as we know, no one right. is... There are stats for an assassin, but there's no cost for an assassin. Okay. Yeah, but assassin and faceless men are a little different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so like all of the Will lands, as far as we know, there's no one coming to claim those lands. Will and, did not leave a will. And, I, I mean, theoretically, I guess it falls to Prince again to decide what happens to it. I mean, we're the closest pro proper custodians. So, there the may land. be distant relatives, but in canon, there's nothing. Like, nothing, very little is wrong with the family in canon. Okay. So, uh, Rusty's so yeah, sorry. to be anything. That could be land that we get, based upon our interaction with <laughs> that brief stop there. I don't. <laughs> I'm not like spooked out, but I'm a little bit concerned about what we might find there. Uh, they may not have been the most moral people. Still, I mean, they don't have a flayed person as their house sigil, which. Is is worth something, but yeah, uh, yeah, they were very much a, a "don't come inside" kind of people. Oh, we lost Ash. Um, the face has been getting got him for asking too many questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah apparently, it's one of those things where if you have to ask how much, you can't afford it. <laughs> Story of the situations. Um, from what we know the books, uh, I think a thousand gold's <laughs> probably too too cheap. Yeah, probably. Um, so yeah, I I know that uh, Bela is looking to get a big nice castle of her own someday. Uh, but the Sorry, castle my, will my, 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 isn't maybe high on that list of ones that she'd want to occupy. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's like that little town in the lottery. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Um, well, it seems that our cup overflow up with castles if we can claim them. Yeah, I, and I don't know that we can claim them necessarily. We can, like, if we could get Castle Ironwood, that would be cool. Although we were talking in. There are some people who likely might have a stronger claim than just people like us who. Well, took use it the fact that we we took it once to improve its defenses. Yeah, and my my strategy for that battle was to do as little damage as possible to the actual castle. So it was mostly like um, um, the season engines, like a battering ram for like the gate and then the tower to like let us climb up or wires or whatever. So it wasn't like knocking down walls, it was more just getting up and into it. Sorry I disappeared for a minute, my internet decided it would be fun to take a little nap. <laughs> a fan okay. got it. 
Yeah, a faceless man got me, but I asked him to kill himself. Or he took your face. Yes, I that's what I'm likely. <laughs> but yeah, maybe maybe um, a man should be anyone. And now you're talking, uh, talking about that weird faceless man way, so... A man knows not what you were talking about. Oh, well, in that case, I was, uh, for nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm now, like, consulting the internet if anyone has written about how much a faceless man costs. All. Um, this is all. Yeah. All, all your money. But, um, or, or just one very specific special coin. Um... We'll get that coin then. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, Arya got it through some, like, quite exceptional and traumatic circumstances, so I'm not sure. Here's if the deal. What if in our uh, prisons there's a faceless man? If we let them all go, one of them's probably a faceless man and will probably give us wishes. I mean, I guess the, I, the, the thing. The impression that I get, like, just like thinking about the stuff that is said about them in the books, is that, like, it's not the, it's not necessarily the same cost every time, and it's not necessarily an amount of gold. It can sometimes just be some, the thing you value the most. Um, you know, like that they they seem to be able to sort of it seems to be kind of negotiable what what you can pay them with. But I mean, they are hireable, but I think there's more to it than just handing someone a big bag of gold. But either way, we're not doing that. <laughs> it would be nice if this was a nice bloodless arc with like nobody getting hurt that would be good well not hurt f physically anyway <laughs> well mm -hmm. it's not over yet no it's, it's definitely not and I'm I'm pretty sure that someone is going to get hurt by, by the end of it I'm just not sure who and in what way yeah. there are definitely people who I think are more likely to hurt people and get hurt um whether or not those are reasonable suspicions is another matter though i, yeah. I hope that it's at least not going to end up with like a civil war <laughs> that'd be <laughs> nice not yet let's see yeah. next uh next arc i Did, think wait, wait, i was just about to ask actually like do you, do you have like it was a kind of two-pronged question i guess of like do you have plans for your post-arc downtime and like, what? I guess like, what do you think will come up next arc, or what like, what would you like to see come up next arc? Those are good questions. Um, I realized I shouldn't have asked three at once. <laughs> yeah, I think for Bela's downtime, um, there'll there'll be like a wedding in the distance, right? For yeah. most of us. Um, to plan and so that'll be something we need to carry out and mm. there's some machinations going on with grandfather <laughs> uh, and Lady Elena possibly and mm -hmm. however that sort of dictates events coming up we'll have to see and then there's potentially other events that we don't have any idea of because it could be mystery night related. It, it could be some other plot arc that's about to thrust itself on us at the tournament as one of our guests murders another guest and causes a big schism and yeah. intentions, right? Like that could always happen. I mean, we've been good about downplaying it so far, but we can't be everywhere. So yeah. that's a possibility. So there could be things there um uh i don't think bela has much of a an agenda of her own yet um i think she's looking to boost our house's capabilities in preparation for whatever we might need to do with sort of the her ongoing assumption is that grandfather and Reina eventually will know the best uses for them and so she isn't like eager to like go out to start wars at, at the moment but she's like I want to be ready for them and 
be able to ensure we could that I can bring victory to our house in mm-hmm. in the way that it needs to happen. So Yeah. I can definitely kind of see that being kind of Bela sort of being the strong right hand of House Nymerian kind of thing. Yeah. I'll, I'll also add in the the fact that Grandfather has left Rena and I so out of the ongoing politics around us that I don't know of any threats that I need to be worried about and I don't know of any opportunities that I might need to prepare for. So like those yeah. sort of like just being in the dark is probably a little bit bothersome to her. Like not that she necessarily needs to have a say in decisions that go on, but knowing something that may or may not happen in the future would help her to make sure that our forces are ready for this. Totally. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's good to know because it definitely bothers Adam a lot. And it, I, I think there's a, like, I've got a bit of reassurance there that like at least one sibling is going to agree that we shouldn't be being kept in the dark. Um, not sure how, how, how does Luke feel about, about that? Like, how do you think he'll react to, um, like Grandpa Maker possibly hiding things that are relevant to us. I mean, he is. So, uh, he's not a fan. <laughs> so he's gonna go away, and he's going to take his new wife, and he's gonna go, uh, but live with her. Yes, <laughs> I guess. And with his yeah, because they're, like, they're, like, they're gonna just bugger off to Ghost Hill and. Just like uh, not over with he's it. gonna make sure their army is ready and their castle is ready, and then he's going to reapproach Grandpa Baker and be like, "All right, I can help. What's up?" Mm. Yeah, that, I mean that's pretty sensible, I think. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that like this, this, it, this is kind of feeling like the. Like a kind of a, a gentle arc before we're about to hit the top of the roller coaster, because like what Rusty always said that like our kind of first arc was like basically prologue and that the real stuff hasn't kicked off yet. I feel like arc the next arc is going to be like stuff is really going to kick off. So this is like a little we're getting a little bit of a breather before things get really fucked up. Uh, um, remember, a lot of roller coasters are launched these days. You don't have to go up a hill to suddenly find yourself at eighty miles an hour in the plot. Fine, but shut up. <laughs> I'm showing how long it's been since I was on a roller coaster. <laughs> last time, last time I went on them, they was all made of wood. <laughs> um, you know what? You knew what I meant. I was just gonna say some of the best coasters are steel wood hybrids these days. So. Okay. But I, I was like, I've been always gonna care, and then I was like, didn't say anything. I know literally nothing about roller coasters, so I will take your word for it. Uh, what's the big theme park you guys have in the UK? Um, well, we've got um, Alton Towers is probably the Alton, biggest one. Alton Towers is what I was thinking of. Alton Towers is the big one. That there's there's a few others. There's like Thorpe, there was like Thorpe Park and Chessington and stuff. There's a few others, but like there, the fam- the big famous ones, Alton Towers. There there we used to be there used to be an America themed theme park yes. in the UK. It's true. It was it was huge. Well, I mean, for its time. It was like in the in the seventies, eighties and nineties before it like closed down eventually. Um I know this is a big tangent for this show, but I, I'm, I'm looking it, this up. Look it was the American Adventure theme park. Yes. It was wildly yeah. popular uh for yeah, it, it, for its size. I've seen several videos on this, yes. yeah. They only it, 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 opened in 1987 and it closed back in 2007 okay I'm oh sorry. it was later i thought too yeah, yeah although it was like in disrepair for a number of years mm-hmm. i'm surprised i've never heard of that oh wow, that's fascinating and weird let's go to the america the, theme park there are a lot of like <laughs> shows and things like that was like some of its bigger draws in the beginning but eventually they had to build a bunch of higher thrill rides to cut to compete with the likes of Alton Towers and and another uh, 
theme park as well. So, uh, <laughs> just, anyhow. <laughs> yeah. like, you, I, I mean, there's a throwaway metaphor and it ran away from us. Um, and you could hire a faceless man there. <laughs> I, like, I, I vaguely... But he had a paid theme park cost. Oh. I, I vaguely recall, like, ages ago, Rusty hinting that some shit was going to go down in the Riverlands, and I don't know if that went away when we no longer had a Riverlander in the party, or if that's still going to happen, or some variation of it. Um, and given some other stuff that he has, like... I mean, I might be taking it as a hint, or and it might not be a hint at all. Um, I've got a history of reading too much into stuff Rusty says. Um, but I'm feeling like at least something is going to kick off on the Westeros side of the border, and we're probably going to get dragged into it. Is what I think is the very broad. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just my guess, but I'm pretty sure Robert Baratheon's gonna die. Yeah, I think that's a very, very high likelihood, and we're gonna get dragged into the ensuing succession crisis. Um, so that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, well, well, obviously our storyline isn't following that from the books, but I don't see either way Robert living much longer. Yeah, I think there's a possibility that the the aftermath of it might be quite different. It could well, it could go from being exactly the same to being wildly different. But I, I do agree that him carking it is probably going to be at least part of what happens. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be. I think, so... I think also possibly our grandpa's going to die probably as well. I think either before a thousand or years. I told you. <laughs> I just don't agree with you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I think it's He's probably low. likely that He's... the king dies and the immediate after effect, after effect is pretty much the same. Um, That's what and I'm... then then I think our worlds might diverge a bit based upon our actions in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I also suspect if... um, I also yeah. suspect if Ned's not in King Land King's Landing the North won't be drawn into the conflict so personally that will let another region maybe shine like ours. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking we might get put in, Ned, in the Ned Stark position here, which depending on who's the Ned Stark in, the, in that equation is troublesome. Grandf grandfather. It's literally where my mind went. It's like, shit, what if our granddad is, is the Ned Stark equivalent and that's, that's how shit's going to go down? Well, we'll know that... if we get a summon if my brother gets a summons to king's landing fuck yeah for i don't see that happening he doesn't have that close of ties well to... i mean we'll, we'll see like when john aaron dies right and yeah that's we'll, we'll see how that might play out we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, I, I, I suppose it could be like like ah oh, your house is not prominent i do need an old guy he's kind of the king um i guess it's a possibility <clears throat> well also our grandfather has been in very close contact with John Aaron recently. That was one of the things that Stannis said to Adam that caused Adam to go and talk to Maker in the first place. Was he said it was like Adam asked, "What do like what does the small council think about like if I were to become Lord of Harrenhal, would that be considered a threat to the crown? Because it's literally the like three times bigger than the next biggest castle in the realm. It's a big deal." And Stannis was I mean... like. The king will care about what we tell him it, to care it about. It both is and isn't, because <laughs> everything, nothing good ever happens. I, true, but I had not finished speaking. Oh, I'm um, sorry, yeah, go ahead. The, 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 the Harrenhal curse is its whole other thing, and a big part of why Adam has not leapt at the opportunity, because it's fucking cursed. Um, but, like, Stannis basically said, like, the king will care about what we tell him to care about, and he, we're not telling him to care about this, really. And none of us, and he kind of went like through a whole bunch of like all the others, and kind of was like, yeah, they don't really care. Um, and then he kind of left out the hand, kind of weirdly, and like Adam was like, well, well, what does the hand think? And he was like, well, ask your grandfather because they've been corresponding for months. So that was like another layer of why, like, why say it so mysteriously. Um, so yeah, the thing is like John Aaron's death is what kicks off the whole plot of A Song of Ice and Fire. It's not Robert Baratheon's death that's the the kind of ground zero for it. So that's the death to watch out for uh, more than the king's. Uh, that is true. Uh, that is true. 
then like Rusty might have a totally different plot in mind, or we might be kind of taking the Starks position in a similar plot. I'm I'm not sure which yet. Yeah, I I don't think I would buy Rusty as just inserting us as the Stark equivalent. I I think he's yeah. more creative and going to give us our own story. Mm. But I I wouldn't be surprised to see lots of events happen similarly and then just give us the opportunity to kind well, of... Especially stuff that isn't heavily affected by us. Like, yeah. Yeah. regardless of John Aaron, Robert was probably going to get drunk and die on a hunting trip eventually. And that was probably why Cersei had people right. pouring wine into his cup constantly whenever he was out hunting. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> It was probably like you like you say, just a matter of time um for that to happen. Um and there's probably some stuff that's kind of that's gonna track the same, but I think we have already made things different enough that it's not gonna be exactly the same. Um Rusty will have thought up a whole bunch of other ways to make our lives difficult. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so but yeah like... the, the idea that the Seven Kingdoms fall into civil war and a new, maybe more legitimate war needs to take place, I think might be a general storyline. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a very Game of Thrones type storyline, right? Like, that seems to be what everyone always plays in this Where, realm. Yeah. Where the chips fall when that war breaks out is going to largely depend on these marriage alliances and who we befriended and... All bets are off, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's probably even a lot of randomness. Rusty hasn't really... Uh, well, he's given thought to, but hasn't like, like planned out. Like, they will be on X side because of the player agency when it comes to like those kind of things, exactly. See, like, I've kind of gotten... Like more recently, kind of gotten him an impression that he's got a very solid plan in place. Um, oh, I think he knows what what, what the NPCs factions are do, but who we're excited with specifically. Oh no, yeah, no, I, I get it. Like, it's more based on kind of um, because I was very back and forth about a particular thing, um, and like I later kind of like sort of changed. Not, not quite changed my mind, but like had some second thoughts, and then Rusty was like, I thought this was already a final decision, and have already kind of put stuff in place, and I'm like, oh, well, okay, right, so because so th I think things are more fixed than I, there's, they were certainly more fixed than I thought they were, so um, I think he's definitely got an idea of who's going to go in what direction. Um, but of course we can always mess with that, so I think there's a bit, there's allowance for us to influence things. Certainly. Yeah. So, like, aside from kind of, like, what we think is kind of going down, is there, like, other, like, not necessarily big plot stuff, but there's, is there, like, other stuff that you would, like, like to come up? Are there factions or individuals that you'd like to see involved like is there other characters i yeah. i would like to see a return of of john thor at some point in some way me too <laughs> mm -hmm. I, would, I would kind of like to at least uh, uh i suppose i wouldn't i wouldn't say no to finding out that um orton lucas has gotten himself stabbed or something Because um, uh, yeah, yes. I think we had some concerns about like, oh, like, don't like when Jonathan goes to the wall, don't let Orton like turn him into a Nymerian enemy. Because <laughs> he's wily. Or I mean, maybe yeah. I, I mean maybe Orton does go up to the wall and take a long hard look at himself and change his ways, but I, I'm I, I doubtful. <laughs> uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. I think he's in a scheme and scheme. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck scheming when we make all ravens extinct. Can we not do that? We need to. We have letters we need to send. Unless you're prepared to replace them okay. with another bird. <laughs> I mean, I I'm prepared to declare another bird the replacement. <laughs> oh, 
really That's like, oh, stop being so bloody. <laughs> stop so, being sensible, Ash. <laughs> so is anyone planning on half murdering anyone before the melee? Um... Serious answer, no joke answer, yes. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah. I haven't uh, hated anybody yet who's in, um, who's been involved, so. Yeah, I don't have any yeah. plans yet, but we shall see, depending on how. Well, like, I, might, I might joke a lot about eliminating Elia, but I'm not actually. How about I, I yell like loudly. To actually kill her. <laughs> how about I yell loudly uh, out loud? I can't poison anybody. I am a knight, and then you poison them, Bela, because you're not a knight. <laughs> <laughs> Is that that's like the loophole of no man can kill me? <laughs> yeah, no man here will poison anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but like none of, I mean, the whole thing was like it, this tourney was by invite, so I kind of feel like by definition we didn't invite anyone who was our enemy. I don't recall inviting well, a mystery knight either, but one still <laughs> showed up. I mean, this is true. They kind of came as a, like the mystery knight came as a plus one. Um, also, I mean, I'm not super comfortable with Richard Hort being around because even though he didn't do anything actually wrong, he didn't do anything illegal or necessary, even immoral. Really, just it was an accident. But I'm, it still planted this inherent distrust for him. We can poison him. That's what Will would want. What? Half poison oh. him. Yeah, you poison all the way. Will would poison him all the way. That's what he wants. See, the thing is, I kind of feel like, like I, I can totally see the reasoning behind it, and it would not be a huge stretch to actually want to do it, but I kind of feel like once you do that, you're no longer one of the good guys. Uh, we didn't do it. The ghost of Will did it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I, I think... It, just a kind of a vague unease. I don't think Adam actually hates him enough to kill him. Just doesn't want to be around him. What will happen is when he gets poisoned, somebody, uh, Adam, yell, yeah, the ghost of Will must have done it. <laughs> and then, uh, Erica, I want you to go, go, oh, I agree. I saw a ghost haunting him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that is. And then both of you go, who said that? You know, I don't even think the most naive person would fail to see through that. <laughs> and, and I'll yell, I'll yell, I heard some masters said ghosts were definitely real. <laughs> no, I don't have a source for that. Uh, 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 this is kind of clearly showing that we need to inject more drama into this arc. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's about to be injected. <laughs> oh, by what Rusty. if he does get poisoned though, and it wasn't us, and everyone blames us? That'd be pretty dramatic. Yeah. I, I feel uh, like although Rusty... another poison blame from us. Come on. I feel like probably Rusty's got like a random roll table that he's just periodically consulting. That like when like and one of them's going to be shit kicks off, and we're going to hit it eventually. So roll stuff, fan. <laughs> Whenever we do any like anything that's like a social gathering, which we've got a few coming up, he's got he's got his random roll stuff and like people are in chat are picking numbers and some some of it's gonna be um something that could potentially blow up. We've got the hunt coming up like this the next come like the next Oh, it's a good place to murder someone. It's a great place. a hunt is a brilliant place to murder someone. Um so I feel oh, I mean, if you were going to murder someone... Oh, what if Stannis dies? In a hunting accident. No, don't. <laughs> no, no, I, no brother of the king is going to die while on our lands. Yeah, yeah. I think... What if Stannis and Ruby both die? <laughs> don't. Um, well, Do not. One, one that and would they be... And they frame really Oris. But did they, or did he really do it? You're doing this to wind me up, aren't you? That last part a little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, because yeah, like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, I'm not going to be like super upset if Stannis died, but I would prefer that it not be in a circumstance where it can seem like we killed him. So that would not be ideal. And like, if anyone like tries to frame Oris for anything, I'm just going to have to like make him run away with me. 
Um, with his dying breath, he writes in his own blood our name. Don't. Also, I, like I don't think he like. I, I, <gasps> with his dying breath, he points to the L and the N that are conveniently nearby. But it's actually Nathan Lucas. Wow. And I stole that from The Simpsons. So, is, if anybody recognize that. I'm just like, this is go going to, like... Yeah, I didn't recognize it, because, like, I've, I've never been a gigantic Simpsons fan. But, um, that is definitely so far out of the realms of possibility. <laughs> that... If we're going to a conspiracy board here, someone else murdering them on our lands during this tournament... Would be would so be bad for us. So bad. Yeah. If someone wanted to fuck us up, that would be a really quick way to do it, I think. I just... Is if anything bad happened to. <laughs> I realized um... Nathan and I had the same initials <laughs> as I was doing that. So. You do, just... just the other way around, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, if, it, if, it's, if it's all, it's all going to come down on you. If, if, it, if anyone's pointing to an N and an L, it's, it's going to, you know, people are going to be looking at you. I'm as innocent as Maggie Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, thought, I mean, I really hope that if I mean, whatever bad shit kicks off, I hope it's at least something we can handle. Um, I want, I want a dramatic reveal of the, the initials now. Damn it! Well, I mean, you could always just write Rusty a message and make a request. I'm sure he's got some royal boons stacked up that he's just like waiting to use. Oh, well, see, in, in the Simpsons, Mr. Burns points. He falls on a sundial, so he points to the to the to the, the um, uh, initials um, uh, <laughs> west and south, Wayland Smithers, which is what they so they assume that's the killer. Um, oh my god! Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers for a thirty-year-old mystery. <laughs> Also, Dallas ends this way. That's the joke. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, we have an excuse to have Ellen in in some sort of a thing, and I just I don't see that happening. Mm. Uh, uh, like to, to be honest, though, like I would love us to do like a murder mystery of some sort. That would be fun. Well, I say that would be fun, and then like Rusty would probably like make me really anxious with it and throw us into something where we're like, ah, fuck. The last murder mystery you produced a, a conspiracy wall, so. Yeah, like we have seen what happens when like you put like the tiniest little <laughs> seed of a doubt into my mind, and the fact that I don't have a normal sleep pattern just means I sit and think about it, and it just turns into this massive. Uh, conspiracy, <laughs> and it's though well, I've been trying to keep in mind that that happened and that things are not necessarily um, as elaborate as they become in my mind. Um, especially because like I, I was like for a while like kind of writing my like long screeds of theory of like what was going on and Rusty going, did you really overthinking it? <laughs> It's a, it's a common player problem if you run a mystery is um, first of all, somebody will get it and somebody else will go, it can't be that simple. <laughs> no. It, I mean, uh, that is actually like a kind of psychological who, phenomenon. Who killed this guy? Well, he was seen arguing over the fact that the grocer uh, slept with his wife and, and, and they were both angry and the grocer said, I'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> that must be a red herring. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, if uh, you I, I've to... never ran a mystery as a GM successfully at anything. No, like I ran a CFRP kind of like short campaign a few years ago, um, that that was not quite a murder mystery, but definitely like a conspiracy mystery where, and it was kind of set like during, um, like all the greens and blacks stuff, um. And it so didn't go the way that, like, I because I had a kind of, I was like, I'm not going to over plan. I'm going to have this rough track, and right, there'll be sure there'll be variation, but we'll roughly go this way. It so didn't. Like first chance, it just went totally off in another direction, and it was a miracle that I got it to come back to the same, back to the right end point eventually. <laughs> 
that was yeah. It's why I don't GM very often. It's just way too stressful. I'm not very good at adapting to change. <laughs> well, I don't really have much else to discuss. I don't think anyone else have any questions for me. I mean, I I had more stuff. Um, Go ahead. Like, well, not not loads, but like do, like what are your like long term goals for your character? Like like even like. Not even necessarily just next art, but like beyond that, like are, what what things do you are there um, things that you really want to achieve long term? Yeah, become a better fighter and better general, and then put myself on the throne. <laughs> I was going to say, like, uh, do you want the throne or do you want just Driftmark? <laughs> oh no, I'm taking Driftmark one or the other. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, decided to myself. I suppose if we put if we put Raina on the throne, she'd probably make you master of ships, so you could have Driftmark. And even though I've never been on a ship, I want my goddamn job, <laughs> master of ships. Yeah, I'm th I'm thinking like I, like out of the four of us, who would be most likely to become a pirate? And it, I think it's either Luke or Bela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or I mean, at Orn, Orn will still be around. He can be the pirate. I, I'd like. I feel like ships aren't. Built big enough to house an Oris. The no, not Oris. Are... I'm sorry, sorry. Orn waters. Oh, uh, Orin. Not Oris. Um, I, got I was. I, I wasn't sure who you were talking about. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, oh, I mean, Orin's already yeah, a pirate, basically. Like, yeah, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't want to just be him, so I'm not going to be a pirate. Um, <laughs> I, know, I suppose you didn't like that he was nicking your act. <laughs> oh no! No, do like, not. How, how dare you! <laughs> he just did it without even caring. Yeah. Yeah. Can't even turn up on time for a party. I I think for Bela, her her goals include getting a nice castle to live in. But beyond that, she wants to be so successful as a general that they write like tomes about her her battles. So like there's one like we've already had like the the vulture king right like that that's like a stepping stone like she wants to have like tomes written about like her battles and stuff to the point where maybe she could even write her own like strategy tome or book or something like, oh that would be that would be very cool she that's how she wants to change the the face of westeros of like a a woman being like held up as an example of good military leadership. I like that a lot. That's really cool. I kind of wanted to like, like, say, like, get, say like Bela the Bold, but there's already a, a, someone who's got the by name the Bold. So maybe need to wait, uh, maybe need to come, come up with something else that's alliterative. <laughs> but Barry's the one I'll ever. Is that a... a is that another he's forbidden to die thing? <laughs> no, I just I'm just saying that once he dies of old age, because he's old, you can take the, the term the bold. Yeah, it's, it, it could be a, a an inherited title. Once once one bold dies, another rises up. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a word that like I think is like quite apt for describing Bela anyway. So, and I, and I suppose there's nothing that says you can't have two people with the same by name because you must run out of them eventually yeah probably and I mean like they, they don't necessarily have to be like there's, there's 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 clearly some leeway with the alliteration because like Oris and Oroch are not this, exactly the same pronunciation so uh, it depends on what accent you got you can get away with a little bit you know it doesn't need to be exactly the same so We'll think of something. Yeah. We'll think. I'm surprised that like Rusty didn't already like come up with something, but it's um, I don't know. He's maybe got something. He's maybe thinking of something. <laughs> well, that would be really cool to like have, um, you know, be able to sort of establish herself like historically as this great uh, leader in general. That's that's mm -hmm. really cool. I like that. I've got no idea what Reyna's are. I, I know she has some ambitions of some sort. I'm not sure exactly what they are. Um, I don't know if she has specific plans. And um, I think 
a, a lot of Adam's goals are tied up in like getting his siblings to to be like powerful and important. He doesn't really want to be terribly much in the spotlight himself. Would rather be a, a kingmaker than a king. So mm. I, th- I think like if I'm dreaming big for Adam, I think ultimately he I think he would really like to be on the small council someday. I think that's the kind of thing that would be a kind of like if the, the sort of sky's the limit kind of thing that would be like an ultimate goal that he'd like um, is, is to do that so like being influential more by kind of having an active role in like other people being great but I suppose we'd also kind of want to just to be um, respected and have people kind of care about what he thinks um like just yeah can be respected as an advisor um but definitely wants to be more capable as um like in general like i think he doesn't like that he's always like has to be kept at the back in a fight and things like that i think he wants to be able to fight his own battles as well i guess is, is maybe part of it like i think there's there was the thing at kind of King's Landing where he kind of picked a fight that he wasn't going to be able to actually, not even that a fight he couldn't win, but a fight he literally couldn't fight. So I think there's maybe an element of him wanting to be more independent um, and uh, yeah, uh, I, th- I think his other goal is to get a boyfriend. <laughs> that and that, that's that's <laughs> find find someone who is way out of his league. But who thinks that he's out of their league so that they can settle down in mutual happy confusion? Um, yeah. Cool. Um, do we have more topics? I feel like we like we've we've talked about a lot of good stuff actually. Yeah, um, I do too. We, yeah, we don't need to go to like the, like the full normal game time or anything. No, yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll save last chance for questions from the chat. Um, yeah. Like, we'll... Otherwise, we'll start winding this down. Yeah. Um, like, I suppose like, I, like I'm wondering about like what, how do you feel like that your character has evolved since we started playing like over a year and a half ago it's like a little, i think it's a little over six months in world time so it's like do, do you feel like there's like that your character's changed or grown in in any particular uh, ways i think bela feels more confident in herself at this point uh she's gotten to do some things that she'd only really been training for so the, the joust in King's Landing was like the first chance to really like prove her martial abilities and she did a heckin' good job. The, like not just the joust, but also the melee and then the trial valley seven. Uh, I think she made people kind of notice her quite a bit. And then yeah. leading an army to fight the Vulture King has sort of placed her in a very, unique position amongst we'll say um, leaders like military leaders uh, already so so she's finding out that like the thing that she's learned that she can actually step into these roles and accomplish them and she's pretty happy about that and wants to see where that'll take her yeah, I think like that's been a really big turning point. Like like you say, like she's been training a long time for it, but this is this was when it got its real like field test. Mm-hmm. First with the Vulture King and then when we like besieged Ironwood, like the the fact that I think also like she like defeated um Andrew's Ironwood in single combat, if I recall correctly. Like he was just like I'm not I, like, you know, I'll die before you take my castle, and you were like, "Oh, well, we're real, real tickled to hear you say that because that's what's <laughs> gonna happen." But yeah, that, that's really cool that she's like very that she's kind of come into her own. I don't really have an answer for that yet. Okay. After you get it a year. 
<laughs> another, another year. Okay, no, that's 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 fair enough. It, 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 like I do get a sense that like Luke is still kind of finding his place in in the world, and that's okay. He's on a journey, and that's all right. Um, I think Adam has definitely gotten more confident. Like he kind of started when we started out, he was very kind of feeling sorry for himself and feeling like he wasn't going to be able to really be useful to the house and stuff like that and kind of feeling um, unimportant and he's kind of starting to feel a bit more like he can actually do stuff and is no longer kind of waiting for an opportun for opportunities to be handed to him, he's actually going and looking for them now and not kind of feeling like he needs to have permission to be himself um, seems to be I mean, it feels, feels to me anyway like he's kind of becoming more himself in general and like has managed to kind of make some like good friendships that he can, like he's actually started to learn to kind of trust people which he's not been able to do really because he's kind of felt like he's among strangers all the time yeah. so he's starting to like kind of put down roots a little bit and kind of feel like he's actually in a place where he's he doesn't feel totally safe, but I feel like he's kind of getting to a point where he feels like he's safer. At least there, are, he knows now that there are people who have actually got his back and aren't gonna like abandon him. Yeah, I feel. Like I would just gotta like a... get him his boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, there, there have been hints that like I, that that is like something that is definitely planned um for future stuff um i'm not going to kind of go into any specifics because i want surprises okay. um but, but yeah like it, it'll happen eventually um but like he's, he's still got a bit of hopeless pining to <laughs> to get done until that happens um and then like he might kind of chill out a bit and be less anxious about everything um, <laughs> Because like a whole big, a whole big thing about it, like part of what was like really, he kept getting flustered in that last conversation with Oris. Because like to Oris, it was as simple as, yeah, make lots of money, then you can just like buy somebody. And and he's like, that's not how a relationship works, Oris. You can't just buy like people's affection. Well, not in a not in the meaningful way that Adam wants, um, like a relationship, like. But to Oris, it's just the yeah, money. Like, if you have enough money, you can fix anything. And to an extent, mm -hmm. like Stannis also said that as well. Because when, when Oris, when um, Adam was like, you know, like how do you get like these kind of spy networks and people who are loyal to you and stuff? And um, the Stannis was just like money and like people's and yeah, you can get people to to be loyal to you if you kind of have enough resources to throw at them. So. I think he's kind of internalized a bit of that. Of like, yeah, okay, I, I definitely do want to make a bunch of money and get more people working for me and be like more sort of behind the scenes influential that way. But it's not going to get me all of my goals, and it's certainly not going to get me like the emotional fulfillment that I'm looking for. Um, but um, you know, I think. I'm hoping that the next arc will kind of give us get give him more opportunities to kind of um, kind of give it a go instead of being scared of getting rejected. I think that's another thing. Is like Oris's reje rejection has made him really scared of trying again. So I think I need to get him in a position where like he f where he's around someone that he likes enough to try again with, and maybe hopefully not get knocked back this time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, All right, well, my uh, allergy witnesses are beginning to kick in a little early. Um, so, uh, sorry we couldn't have a full game, but this was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, like, I will never pass up an opportunity to talk about Seamus Spirits, even when I'm not asked to. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, th this is kind of easy for me. I can just talk about it constantly. Well, I look forward to seeing you all um, two weeks from now. Yes. Yeah. We'll be hopefully back to normal in two weeks' time. I certainly hope it doesn't take more than two weeks for Rusty's sake uh, for his computer to. 
Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully everything will be back to normal and we can get back to watching knights batter lumps out each other. <laughs> Yo, we'll go put a few on their butts too. Um... Oh my. Make, just make sure you get consent first. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I just said on their back, so I meant it that way. Oh, wow. Wow. oh, such wordplay. All right, and on and that note, I have to go. <laughs> on that note, I think we'll call it there. So, uh, yeah. thanks for hanging out, everyone. Thanks for questions from the audience, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. All right. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.